I see Within the night press away. It. I'll go press this over here now and do that. And yeah, it's press me. this and twiddle that. Oh yeah, wiggle oh, this. Tickle. I know mine's having a problem He's, too. Oh, my knobs go up to eleven. There we are. And now let's uh, do this and say, "Hey everyone!" and hello to everybody watching on YouTube after the fact. Don't forget to join y'all live on Twitch every week. Hi, all you lovely people. There we go. We got three top toasters now. There's Andrea, Matricula, and then Cat. Hey, there's Jean. Hey, Jean. Good to see you. I saw she posted in the event. Was it? Did she? Yes, Don't she say did. hi. She said, ready, set. Oh, nice. Mm. Excellent. Okay. And, oh. Good to see ya. Okay, let's see. What do we got here? We got 15 seconds. Are we going live on the radio stations? In case you're new to us on Twitch or YouTube, we're horribly offensive. Okay, there's your disclaimer. Terribly, terribly. Mm. Fuck yes, we are. And we're live on the stations. Welcome to Talk of the Tavern, Monday, October 16th, where we'll be discussing Confederate history by a black man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got one of those? Oh, this. <coughs> yeah, we sent out for one special. Yeah, but we can only rent them because it's illegal to. Anyhow. <laughs> hey, Kent, how you <laughs> doing, like... darling? Oh, there we go. And, and football plays it. Hello to you two. We know that person, don't we? We know that. Hello, Von Hagner. Ah. Hey, guys. How's everyone doing? Okay, now let's see here. We are broadcasting, well, I'm broadcasting out of the beautiful Retro Daddy in Williamsburg, Virginia. You can get your all your old and new nerdy needs. And they have an open mic night this week, Thursday, 8 to 11. So if you're in the Williamsburg, Virginia area, come check it out. Enjoy some great music and coffee. Oh, wait, something made a noise. Oh, thank you, Kat. She cheered. Oh, I made custom things for Twitch, so when people cheer, they get different messages and um, stuff. There we go. Yeah, oh, when cool. they subscribe. But it didn't do it for you, you, can, you can explain all this to me more next week, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> On the Twitch show. Andrea will be joining us, but she's going to be a li bit late. Let me start with the other intros first. Then. So our local redneck... Ed Summers? How y'all doing? <laughs> I'm drinking uh, <laughs> Jack Daniels. What else would a red deck be drinking? Nice. Um, Budweiser, Bush, Old Milwaukee. Oh. So I only do that, you know, Your when, mama. when I'm really, really trying to fit in. But <laughs> other than that, n no, I don't know. And I'm vaping tonight, nutty tobacco. Hmm. Tobacco that tastes like nuts. And then we have our local pale neck, our resident Brit. Uh, that's uh, Kevin Crew. Good evening, y'all. Uh, this evening, uh, I shall be drinking strong black coffee, uh, heavily laced with Jack Daniels. Uh, unlike Ed's, mine comes with a pretty little gold bow on it because uh, oh. it was a present from my friend. See, you bring it out. Uh, You're in a redneck too, aren't you? Well, you know, it's, yeah, I got my I got my cheap ass dollar store bling on there. You know, um, it's a present from a friend of mine because I wrote him a reference for him to get his first house. So nice, nice. Now, is it a big refrigerator box or a small one? <laughs> well, with prices nowadays, <laughs> I'm not going to assume. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it's it's all right. It's quite nice. It's nice. a nice little start at home for him. He's just started his first family. He's just got his first kid. She's 18 months old now. So, yeah, it's just perfect for them. Nice, nice. And then, of course, I'm Travis Sivart, the host of the show. And tonight I am drinking a local Virginia brew straight out of the bottle. I felt it went more with the theme tonight. So here's some Devil's Backbone Vienna Lager. Got that for tonight. And smoking tonight. Now, I won... A pipe. It's a refurbished pipe, and I've got some C and D haunted bookshop in that for later. But I am going to start with my corn cob pipe, y'all, and uh, that has best of the rest tobacco in it, which I haven't tried either of these. It came with the pipe that I won, so I'll be lighting those up shortly. So Ed, did you look at the banner that Andrea made for us? 
I did look at the banner. It, it looked just like me, man. <laughs> you want all of them? Don't say they all look like <laughs> right. I, I'm trying to help you out a little bit and not make it too complicated. <laughs> the one with the beard. Gotcha. Sorry, I'm white. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> okay. Um, who else do we have? Uh, I want to give a shout out to an old school mate who's listening for the first time tonight, Charles Suffin. Hey, Charles. Good to see you here. Welcome, Charles. Hi, right, Charles. Good to see you. I'm drinking before the toast. I guess we should do the toast. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's an idea. Look, guys, here's the learning. Here's the learning more than what you realized you didn't know. I'd always drink to that. I'll drink to that. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be a... It's, I'm kind of excited by the show because Ed's running it and he's... Yeah, we'll get to that. Let's do... <laughs> So Ed, you, anything go on this week for you? You do anything? You finish the floors? Me. More house stuff, man. Nah, no. we got about uh, three more weeks worth of work yet. Light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, it, it is getting very, very bright. <laughs> <laughs> you don't expect a lot of that around here. <laughs> <laughs> so is Charles? Is is that football plays it? I don't know who fo- who football plays it is. Who's football plays it? They seem to know me. They do, so. or a regular. I think. See, I see, I, I was going to go soulful on it and say football player, but <clears throat> football plays it. So I'm, I'm not sure who that is. Well, they've got moonshine, so they're. Oh, you had lunch, or do you mean like everybody had lunch? Ah, uh, I know who that is. Okay. Hey, bro, what's going on? Okay, good enough. Well, it's <laughs> anyhow. It, it, see, when they spell football like that, I, I think uh, more like rugby, soccer, British football, um, which I realize rugby is not football. I got that cut. Sorry. Actually, it's rugby football. <laughs> That's what I well, said. Not a complicated issue, but yeah. <laughs> I see. I had it right without knowing it. Um, Kevin, anything exciting for you this week besides being shuttled off to the morning crew with? Cooking over an open campfire for next week or so? Oh, that's that's tomorrow morning. Yeah, that's I've still got that joy to look forward to, which is why I probably will be only on for the. Well, we'll see. We'll see how long. <laughs> um, yeah, no, nothing special in my life this week, really. I don't think. Now let's see here. There you go. You, there. That was exciting for you. <laughs> <laughs> totally anticlimactic, but no, I've got absolutely nothing this week. And then we have Von Hegner drinking seltzer, Ian drinking iced coffee, smoking the house blend. Is that slang for pot? I don't know. I'm not hip to it. Euphemism for fellatio. <laughs> Self or somebody there too? Because <laughs> both are talented in different ways. Okay. And, uh, my week actually, actually not a whole lot went on during my week. Uh, Gina's having tea tonight. Um, though this weekend I did do – I covered one news story. Oh, that newspaper cut how many articles I'm allowed to submit because suddenly they have a budget thing with the fiscal end of the year. So for a couple weeks I'm going to be a broke-ass motherfucker. But I did cover a story this weekend for a suicide prevention walk. And really the key to this is uh, the guy mentioned – the guy running it that I talked to and interviewed – he mentions they want to focus on prevention. So instead of treating somebody once they've attempted suicide to get to people and figure out who wants help, needs help before they attempt suicide. And I'm like, well, that's a great philosophy. I mean, not that we don't want to treat the people that try to go, well, you're there already. Have a good day. But uh, yeah, anything, guys? Help me out with this. I'm digging a hole. <laughs> What else did you do, Travis? <laughs> Good cue to get off that topic. Move on. <laughs> and as I said, Andrea will be joining us. We already have 10 folks watching on Twitch. That's awesome. And for those of you new to Twitch, That's next a, week... a whole lot of Twitching going on. It is. Twitching the next night. week, we'll be going... Oh, Talking Towies here, who has their own Twitch channel, which is really entertaining win if you want to post your link to your channel please feel free to do so glad to see you here oh no i broke the cardinal rule i, I wasn't supposed to call out people who's ah, ah. you've broke you've broken the fourth wall man 
hold on, I'll light my pipe. We'll who the cover fuck it. You, who the fuck are you, Deadpool? <laughs> um, so yeah, not uh, a lot went on this week. Um, I, it's not necessarily a bad thing. No, no, not at all. I, I have been so busy lately, I've hit the point where I feel like I want to take two days to do nothing just to reboot and reset because it got to such a scramble I wasn't able to get my mental footing on what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah, I feel you there. And, uh, yeah, so I'm actually... I'm pretty sure everybody listening tonight is nodding going, yep. Yeah. So when the paper went, oh, we're cutting your stories, which they didn't do it cruelly. Matter of fact, my editor, who's like 22 and seven and a half months pregnant, mm-hmm. after she sent me the email, she actually like turned off her phone and went for a walk because she was crying about it. And I got her on the phone going, don't sweat it. We'll work it out. It's going to be fine. Everything will go back to normal soon enough. You know how companies are. You know, they'll start by going, oh, you can't do that anymore. And three months later, it's right back the way it was. Um. But other than that, I'm almost done watching Jessica Jones. I got two episodes left. Um, really enjoying David Tennant in that. I I started watching the new Star Trek. And and and. I like it. I really like it so far. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I heard they're swearing for the first time on Star Trek. Well, they can now. So yeah, i well they could have in the movies. Yeah. True. And by swearing, I, I mean like I think they're more than just they had, or something. They had the world's the world's first televised interracial kiss. They I did. Don't swear on Star yes. Trek's really yeah. anything to get your knickers in a twist over. It's not like they don't have a precedent for being prepared to go wherever in order for a good storyline, you know. And in Deep Space Nine, I think they had the first televised on on regular TV lesbian kiss. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. Ah, Gray is here. Hey, Gray, what's going on, bud? Really, Gray hey, Reinhardt? Gray. We got him. Yeah. Hey, yeah. good to see you, man. Gray, I have your books. They're in the stack. I am getting to them. I swear, I think about it like two, three times a week. Um, Ed, Kevin, do you remember me telling you about me going to one story down home days? It was a church with the Brush Arbor. Yeah, it was a Soul Brother church. Yeah, which a lot of things I do when it comes to churches. I'm, I'm the only white guy in the whole place, which is kind of cool, because afterwards, when Andrea, Aiden, and I left this, I'm like, were we the only white people? And all of us had to think about it. This is me bragging where I don't fucking look. I don't care. I'm just there <clears throat> to do what I'm doing. But one woman sent me two books that she published about her family and the church. And I went, great. Oh, yes, that's thanks. cool. I tell you what. I picked this book up. It was like having... One of those classic conversations that we all love to have with somebody who is deep into their roots and their history. It was okay. interesting, mm-hmm. captivating. Well, I just – like 15 pages later, I'm like, I don't believe I've read this much this quick. This is something I shouldn't really be interested in, but I can't put it down. Um, and yeah, her love of her daddy really shows through it, and it's good simple wisdom. It, there's there's no airs, there's no anything. It's just her talking about her daddy as a deacon in the church and how she was raised. And so, Gray, that's what yours gets to compare to. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, man. The bar is set. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I am looking forward to his and, of course, getting reviews up for everybody. So. Hold on, let me scroll past Gene's bosom to find Gray's. There he is. Uh, okay. To find Gray's You're bosom? With that. It, hmm, what? Hmm? Yeah. You said let me, let me scroll past Gene's bosom to find Gray's. Oh, yes, Gray. Boob shot, please, sir. Mm. It's, uh, <laughs> by the way, if you guys aren't part of Gray's mailing list... Get on there. The way he does his mailing list, it is like he wrote you a personal letter. He's just got it set in such a conversational tone. You feel like he sent you an email asking how you are and telling you about his <laughs> week. It's, it's really well done. I've looked at my own newsletter going, maybe I need that more one-on-one feel, but maybe – I don't – it's good. Okay. So we got a great playlist tonight. 
for those of you yeah, on we do. White Party Radio and Radio Real. I'm sorry, I can't do it. I know, yeah. I kind of am too. Yeah. It's it's uh because a lot of these songs, yeah, they're they're just favorites. And even the third hour where I, those are just good music. I think uh, since we don't have anything else for the intro, Ed, you said you got a lot to talk about tonight anyway, so it's cool if we get right into the topic, right? Sure. Okay. Let me. The first song is going to mm-hmm. be Waylon Jennings with the themes of Duke, Dukes of Hazard. Good old boys. I, I want to make a dedication. Oh, go ahead. To my good bud, Bill Horn. There we go. Here's for you. Now, of course, he can't hear now if he's listening on the radios, but uh, we do have the Patreon commercial queued up first, so he gets to hear that right before the song for him. <laughs> oh, that's what a my, lucky man. That's my ringtone for him, so, yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, our Patreon commercial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For only 10 cents a day. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> So let's see here. I'm just watching my software here, guys. I'm making sure. Uh, I should get you to record some on the air. Yeah. What? You're watching your software while we're on the air. I got Ed's. What? What? Kevin say? And yes, Ed. Of course, I am. I was just thinking out loud. I was just thinking I should get you to record something humorous for me so I could set it as your ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I-, I could record the chicken joke. I tell it better than you. <laughs> well, cluck you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a mother clucker. All right, isn't it a big cock about it? Don't you love it when you piss people off with their, <laughs> with, with puns? You're like, yeah, yes. Yeah. Frankly, it's one of my favorite pastimes. I think puns are not one of the lowest forms of wit. They're one of the highest if you're good at it. Yes, yes. Especially if you could, you know, string it along and like the pun battles that we get into and whatnot. It's oh yes, that's good stuff right there. It's uh, and hold on, I'm refreshing the page because Gray is tagging me, so I'm paying attention. It were absolutely. There's Gray's newsletter in the comment where he said, "Good evening, Tavern Talkers," on the Facebook event page. So check it out if you guys want to get on that, and then of course check out some of his writing also. Um, don't forget, you can always go to Amazon and preview the first couple pages or chapters of books if the author has it said that way. If they don't, screw them. No. Well, maybe. What do they look like? <laughs> See, at least on Twitch, if we get quiet, they know we're still here. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. We're here. I'm trying to get this corn cob pipe going. Do I look good with it, with the hat? Yeah. Are we back? No. Oh, okay. We we are in 15 seconds, though. Okay. It's only a two-minute, nine-second song. I'll intro you in. <laughs> well, it was only introduction to a TV show. They, they yeah. Kind of... It wasn't a song before that? I don't know. Not I think he that. wrote it specifically for the show. It was the best part of the show a lot of times. This, this is true. Though in the early 80s, I love the show. Now I watch it going, huh. Okay. Anyhow, I'm going to turn everything over here to Ed, and we're going to get some education. Yeah, I can't get no education. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think that's uh, Pink Floyd's original lyrics. Yeah, got you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the rolling right. Floyd. Before we get started, um... I just want to say I am not the foremost authority on the war that is commonly known as the American Civil War. Um, I'm just a dude playing a dude. I'm just a dude playing a dude dressed as another dude. That that's all I am. Uh, He saw Tropic Thunder last night or last week. (laughs) Love it. I saw it for the first time. Love it. Anyway, getting off track already. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Well, that has to do with racial issues too. Yeah. Well. Yeah, man, white man playing blackface. Um, <laughs> uh, I have been studying Civil War history since the fourth grade. So needless to say, I've read about a lot of shit that you don't commonly see in the history books in school. Um, that's my disclaimer. Can't speak about everything. I know people are going to say, but Ed, you didn't mention, hey, we only got three hours. So anyway, uh, disclaimer. So the lawyers can't come and get me. Uh, <laughs> Unless they're hot. 
Oh, yeah. Um, I will start with first talking about the issue of slavery because you can't talk about the Confederacy without talking about the issue of slavery because the two have been so tightly linked together. Right. But the points, there, there are several points I want to make about that because here in America today, we only see black, white slavery. That's all we ever want to talk about. Slavery has existed through biblical times, Roman days, Greek days, you know, and it's like we're calling Thomas Jefferson a racist now because he owned slaves. Okay, we can go back to a Socrates and the Greeks and they all own slaves. Are we supposed to throw all of that stuff out of the history books because they own slaves? I and think not. And it still exists. Right. And it still exists. So, you know, it, it, it was something that happened. It was a very, 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 very bad thing. Okay. But when you go back through history, there were good people that gave a lot to us that owned slaves. So, you know, let's not forget that, but let's not dwell on that too much. <clears throat> Sounds um, reasonable. Yeah. Uh, Africans own slaves, people. Mm. Okay. Many Africans were among the last to abolish slavery to include uh, Murray, Murray Tania. I think I said that right. They were Murray last Tania. Made- Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and actually, wasn't it the Africans that originally sold their own people into slavery? Yes, it was yeah. the Africans that originally sold the slaves to the Dutch to begin with. Yeah. People like dicks. to say, yeah, but slaves were treated differently in Africa. A slave is a slave is a slave. When you lose your free will to go where you want, when you want, how you want, you're a slave. Doesn't matter how often you were beat or anything else. When you can't go nowhere, you're a slave. It's the same damn thing, okay? But anyway, Mary and Tina... Uh, was the last nation in the world to officially abolish slavery. And they did so in 1981. That's hard to believe. 1981. And uh, it wasn't until 2007 that they actually made it a criminal offense. And it has to be said, based on a couple of documentaries I've seen by the BBC about modern politics and the situation on the ground in Africa at the moment, that mm-hmm. having abolished or made slavery illegal doesn't mean that it's actually been eradicated yet. Yeah, still I, very I much read a headline the concern. other day that's an estimated 40 million people around the world still in slavery, technically. Wow. Absolutely, and also you have to bear in mind today as well that when you talk about being in slavery, you also need to consider human trafficking, which is enormously prevalent mm-hmm. from Eastern Europe and from Russia at mm-hmm. the moment, as well as traditionally from the Far East. And by the way, real quick, hola Fabio from Bolivia. Welcome. Glad to have you with us. Awesome. Good evening, Bolivia. Hola Fabio. Okay, carry on. Mm. Oh, sorry, I was drinking. Oh, no, um, that is a good time to drink. <laughs> <laughs> when is it? Bolivia, <laughs> let's drink. The first man to own a slave in the English colonies that will become America was a black man by the name of Anthony Johnson. Um, the original blacks that were brought here from Africa were not brought here slaves. They were brought here as indentured servants, just like people from Europe came here as indentured servants. They worked for seven years. After seven years, they were released. Go find some land, go get a cow, go get a donkey. You're on your own now. Um, uh, there's no taxes being paid, so we can't help you out on welfare and anything like that. You're just on your own. <clears throat> Um, but it was a black man by the name of Anthony Johnson in 1653. Uh, he owned a servant by the name of John Kaser. Kaser claimed that his ser- servitude had ended seven years earlier, and he was actually able to secure the support of someone else because you're a servant. You can't speak for yourself. He was able to secure the support of someone else to speak for him and bring his case to court. He lost, and the case awarded uh, Anthony Johnson Kaser, a slave for life. Oh. First man to own a slave in the American colonies. That's what got the ball rolling. Huh. Uh, once it started, slave was not just a southern thing, as we tend to think of it today. Uh, there was heavy slave trading in ports in New York and Rhode Island until those states later abolished slavery, and they did so because of the heavy Quaker and Puritan religious influences in those colonies. 
question, Travis, or a bug? No. <laughs> I've been flying here all day since I got here. So when I'm randomly waving at everybody. Yeah. How y'all doing? Between this and this. <laughs> go on. Uh, Ron so, Hagner let, and... Go ahead. Uh, yeah, let me ask you. Um, so they abolished it in New York long before the American Civil War then. Is that correct? Before no. the American Civil War, no, I that don't wasn't. Have that that was just a few select colonies, or they weren't states at the time, etc. Well, well, they were states. Uh, they were states after seventeen after the American War of Independence. They were all states. Gotcha. Now they they all had slavery. Every, every state in the country had slavery following uh, uh, the American War of Independence. Excuse me, the American War of Independence. Every, every state in the country had slavery. Then a few of them slowly started to abolish slavery, mainly the northern states, because, again, what I said, the heavy Quaker and Puritan populations, you know, religion. Mm -hmm. Religion could be its own form of slavery. This is true. You know, that's, a whole other, that's a whole other show. <laughs> and by the way, Ed, you might want to check out Von Hagner's point there. Uh, where is Von Hagner? Uh, in in Twitch, <laughs> Von Hagner says there were slaves in the North that still had slavery on the eve of the Civil War. New Jersey, yes, for example. Was. So yes, yes it yes. wasn't all of the North that abolished it. No, before. no it wasn't all of the North, just a, few, a select few. And if Washington, not... D.C., which I was going to mention later, mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. didn't abolish slavery until a whole year after the war started. Yeah. So much for a war being about slavery, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it was... Was the U.S. Capitol in D.C. at that point? Yes. Okay. I, I don't remember when they moved. I just know they had a lot of luggage. Mm. Yes. They know governments. <laughs> Baggage. <cars>. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. See, I'm becoming a yes man tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on to the Confederacy. Why did Confederate states succeed from the Union if it wasn't about slavery? Simply stated, taxes, money, politics. Um, <clears throat> I remember uh, shortly after uh, Trump was either elected or shortly after he was actually sworn in as president. I can't remember which one now. He was getting the crap beat out of him about some statement he made about Andrew Jackson didn't take that shit when the South threatened to succeed. And everybody was beating the fuck out of him. What are you talking about? You don't even know American history. Well, it's because when Andrew Jackson was president, a tax was imposed on the South of imports and exports of goods. Because they were trying to boost the northern industrial eco economy. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrew Jackson threatened at that time to raise troops to invade the South. South Carolina was the one screaming the most. The reason why there wasn't a war for it at that time, Congress said, uh, fuck this shit. And they repealed the tax, basically. Okay. Now, there's points I want to bring up, but I don't want to bring them up before you get to them. No, you, you please might... do, by all means. We can, we can expand later. Or... Now, a, a few points that a lot of people don't realize, but Lincoln abolished slavery in the South before he abolished it in the North. It was still legal to have slaves in the North after it was okay, legal. We'll, Is we'll that correct? Talk to that. Talk okay, we'll get to that. <laughs> okay, and that, that's yeah. I figure that's probably on there at some place on your to-do list. Um, and I forget what the other point is, but if it comes back to me, I'll and, and yeah, just tell me. Hold on, we'll get to that. All right. So we didn't have a war back when Andrew Jackson was president. So we get around to Merrill. Merrill tax was introduced and passed into law just prior to the American Civil War, or or well. No, you said I want to Merrill? talk about that Merrill really, tax? really, really quick. Moral. M-O-R-R-I-L-L. -L. Okay, what was that? Um, but I, I, I want to talk about that American Civil War usage there a little bit. Okay. Technically, it wasn't a civil war. A civil war is when the civilian populace rise up to overthrow the government. It was a war for independence is what it was. But That's true. 
we tend to call it a civil war. But anyway. Well, because <clears throat> winners write it. <laughs> so it sounds war- horrible if, you know, we crush their independence. Yeah, yes. Oh, no, no. They were trying to. Civil they, war. Yeah. That's, yeah. They were revolting. It was a civil war. Yeah. Uh, the moral t- tariff was introduced and passed in law just prior to the war with Abraham Lincoln's support. The tariff, again, tax trade goods coming into and going out of the South, it did not touch the northern in- industries. Southern states started, oh, fuck no, we ain't going to put up with this. Again, with South Carolina leading the way. I, I remember the point now. What's your point? <laughs> well, now, from what I understand, mm-hmm. the South had a lot of the raw materials, which they would sell to the North, who had the majority of the factories. Mm-hmm. Um, so this was a lot of the complaint from the South is you're paying us lesser prices because you have the stuff to make the goods. So we want to build factories and be able to do it here, cut out the middleman. And the North kind of went, mm, wait a minute. Well, and, and not only that, you, um, uh, I got into an argument with somebody about this recently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I won't argue. <laughs> you tell me what you know. <laughs> of course, the ma- major industry in the South was agriculture and particularly tobacco. Right. Major import, tobacco and cotton to both France mm-hmm. and England. Okay. Um, somebody was like, well, the North raised crops too. Yes, the North had crops too, but not on the level that you did in the South. Right. Okay. <laughs> The South had more year-round temperature that they, they can farm longer. They they had a yeah more open space as opposed to the crowded territories in the North. Territory being a general term, not you know. Um, real quick points made by Ron Heg- Hegner. Mm-hmm. Yes, slavery was not abolished in the nations, meaning Oklahoma, until 1868. Uh, was going to be getting to that later. Uh, Ian, the northern states also had more immigration of indigenous servants in the south by a larger margin as well. Absolutely, that was true. <clears throat> uh, Von Hegner also said uh, the war was called the War of Northern Aggression, which is the label that I most commonly refer to it to. But now, I was thought it I'd be... called that at the time, or is that something that we've put on it? Oh, no, Southerners refer okay. to it as War of Northern Aggression, yeah. <clears throat> So, anyway, the yeah. taxes, oh, yeah. South Carolina's pissed off. They lead the way again in succeeding, just as they almost did when Andrew Jackson was president. And a lot of people like to say, but the South fired first. I'd like to tell you the little story about Fort Sumter. The federal government leased Fort Sumter from the state of South Carolina. In exchange of this lease, they were supposed to make certain improvements to the fort. To the fort, they never they never did that. They reneged on the lease. As a matter of fact, they had moved out of the fort before that illustrious day in April. <clears throat> um, Lincoln's tax passed. The South is screaming, hollering, "We're going to succeed!" He's like, "I don't give a fuck. I'll blockade your forts. I'll force you to pay the taxes because if I blockade your forts, you can't sell no goods." You're going to get poor. I'll force you to pay the taxes and come back into the union eventually. We do it today. Sanctions, yeah. sanctions, sanctions, right? Mm-hmm. We, we still do it today. So they ordered troops back into Fort Sumter who, out of who near, did? near uh, the union did. Okay. They had abandoned Fort Sumter. They never right. made the improvements. They left it, went to nearby Fort Monroe. They ordered troops back out of Fort Monroe, back into Fort Sumter. Because Fort Sumter offered the best advantage in Charleston Harbor. Uh, South Carolina said, fuck you. You're on our property. Get off my lawn. They said, no, we're not leaving. So guess what? They shot them up on April 12th, 1861. So Lincoln then threatens invasion. More states follow suit with uh, South Carolina. And the war is on. Questions, questions, questions. Um, by the way, <clears throat> when there says the North called it the, quote, war of the rebellion, end quote, in their records. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no questions at this point in time. Right now, I'm just soaking in the, the history and the storytelling. 
Yeah, no. I'm finding this fascinating, but this is because, <laughs> as I pointed out earlier, as the only non-American regularly involved in the show, my knowledge of American history is quite small. In, in my high school history, we focused mainly on the English Civil War and, and oh, historical that. events that were closer to home. So I know very little, actually, about this period in history and yeah. American politics in general. You know, as a quick tangent, I have met Europeans as well as Russians who know more about our history than most Americans do, and it was just taught <laughs> as standard knowledge in their schools. And There are still houses standing here on the Isle of Wight that are older than America. <laughs> And your underwear are older than me. We know. <laughs> <laughs> and Gene has a comment there. My my cousin Peter Cartwright ran again Lincoln just before the full attack on Fort Sumner. Uh, ran against, I'm guessing she meant? I ran against or rubbed against or something. <laughs> um, he swaffled Lincoln. <laughs> your cousin, damn. How old are you, Gene? <laughs> 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 she looks great for her age that's all I'm going to say yeah. Okay. by the way when uh, that moral tap moral tariff went to effect France and England were quite pissed off themselves because uh, that meant they were going to have to pay more for trade goods you know I'm sure my point that I want to bring up at this point in time is going to come up later in your conversation. So I'm Go ahead. going to. <clears throat> it, it's the whole thing of when it comes to the end of the Civil War, um, where, you know, we did receive foreign help. Originally, that help was probably going to go to the South until Lincoln agreed to abolish slavery as part of the alliance. Um, and other than that, that wasn't even necessarily something Lincoln was worried about. Gosh, there, there was there was a gosh. I wish I wish I looked it up beforehand. Ian, you may know this. There was actually a country that offered elephants to the Union during the Civil War. I uh, remember, it might have been England because they had control of India well, at the time, didn't they? Well, like war elephants. Yeah, they were war yeah. elephants, and it wasn't oh, man, England. That would have been it amazing. Was, it was <laughs> one of those little countries that would have had. War you know, and after and the war, they might have released him into the wild, and we could have had herds of elephants and bison roaming the plains. Yeah, cool. And you could have saved von Hegner. Thailand. I, I knew, yeah. I knew you would know. <laughs> That's von Hegner there. Sorry, Kevin. What were you saying? I was saying then you could have saved yourselves airfares on going on hunting safaris. Yeah, like Steven Spielberg hunting those poor dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, what was his name? What was the lion who had a name? Like a Larry, was it? La oh, Asla. Yeah. Well, yeah. Was, okay. Obviously, there's been more than one lion that's been given a name. But, yeah, was it Larry the lion or something? So they made some kind of internet celebrity out of him. He was shot. He fam some famous lion for some reason, and then he was shot by a was it a dentist or something? By, dentist, yeah. hullabaloo. Mm -hmm. By the way, Wynn says in the South would have had to grow more peanuts for the elephants. <laughs> Georgia grew a lot of peanuts already, dude. I mean, you know, look at the Carter family. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, people, we're stalling a little bit because I've ran out of information before this week in history. <laughs> so, uh, football plays brings up a interesting point here if you want to take a look at that. Yeah, where where are we? I'm going back uh, and forth. On Twitch. And I can read it off if you want. Where? It says three points, but there's only two listed. One, most of the Africans would have probably been killed if they had not been sold into slavery. Two, Lincoln basically interfering in Maryland General Assembly so they would not have the opportunity to vote on secession. True. And the lion's name was Cecil. Cecil. <laughs> Cecil, thank you, whoever that was. That, that was uh, football plays also. Um, Ian then says there's an elephant sanctuary in Tennessee, so the our climate would be fine for that. <laughs> no, I think elephants would do fine. And by the way, I, I'm feeling like South Carolina was the pre-Texas from everything you're saying. Yeah, even though Virginia produced the best generals. 
<laughs> oh, and Jamin says the South ended up with the Camel Corps. Yes, they did have a Camel Corps. Good point. <laughs> Careful, they spit. I don't know how successful the Camel Corps really was. Uh, football player, you may know that, but... Uh, I've just realized as well, because it was annoying me and I had to Google it, but the reason I said Larry the Lion is because that was a talking stuffed toy that was all the rage when I was a child. Oh. Presumably some inner child in me went, Lions, I want a Larry the Lion. So if anyone out there's got a Larry the Lion, send it to contact Kevin. me. I'll tell you where to send it. <laughs> and if I'm you won't send it, I'll tell you where to stick it. I'll exchange it for topless photos. Of you or just random people? Uh, no of me. Okay, just checking. It's uh, Unless it's in mint condition, in which case I'll have a chat with the wife. <laughs> Not necessarily about that. He's a real yeah, man. He'll wait till she comes out of the shower and doesn't see him. I'm kidding. That's wrong. Don't do that. God, no. Oh. Oh. Got a good little crowd <laughs> here in Twitch. <clears throat> yeah. The Camel Corps wasn't we all that useful? Well, it's because we weren't far enough west yet. It would have been more useful out there in some of the western states, I think. Well, there was fighting in Texas. Mm -hmm. That's a good beer. You know why I don't like corn cobs? <laughs> the, the, the pipe. They're rough, oh, okay. man. Right. Okay, all right, sorry. Well, I wasn't looking at my screen. Now I've got context. I'm less amused. Carry on. Actually, okay, Kevin, there's a thing called cornhole, and it's a game now where you throw beanbags at the little board with a hole in it. Whereas when I was growing up, cornholing was slang mm. for prison sex. Anal. Really. Yeah. Uh -oh. But not the good anal. <laughs> the, uh -oh. so, but anyhow. The construction of a corn cob pipe, the stem doesn't come in all the way at the bottom, which means you have tobacco below the stem that doesn't burn. Okay. So, or if it does, when you go to suck it in, you're sucking in the hot ash instead of yeah. A few other points is uh, camel core failed in Arizona; it just wasn't practical. Von Hegner says there were wild camels in the U.S. until well into the 20th century. I remember the DVD of Camels Gone Wild. It, it was. Very erotic. Was that like Gerald's Gone Wild? It was. Was that like Camel Toe Gone Wild? <laughs> <laughs> Humps everywhere. Um, and Ian says, wasn't Larry the Lion inspired by an actual lion purchased by an Englishman from a storefront? Oh, wow. I don't know. Walmart carried Mate. everything. Check you out with your lion-based knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll get back to the topic i promise you cat it's just i went through that much much more faster than i i thought i would yeah, we i thought i would have i thought i would have actually more opposition to it. what do you mean if the war was caused by taxes i i i, I, I thought there would be more opposition there almost uh, every war at least all of them i could think of follow the, the money cause, yeah the cause has been money that's the bottom <clears throat> line for wars Almost every time. Now, this is not to say violence. Violence may produ be produced by other things, you know, passionate feelings, the, doing it for the right. But in actual war where governments get involved, the bottom line is, is this financially something we want to do? Or but, land and religion, yeah. But that, point, still, uh, that still comes down to money, though. Well, not exactly back in the days. Yeah, I mean, okay. Yeah, it, when you you know this is our holy land, etc. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this yeah. is our holy land, or or it, it came back to possessions basically. I don't have any water on my land, but they do over there. Right. Hmm. And Kat yeah. says, uh, from slaves and civil war to cornhole being slang for prison butt sex, <laughs> we have it all here. Love it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, welcome to talk of the tavern. It's what we do. Um, but. <clears throat> Now, I'm seeing a lot of talking, though, but we tend to, though, we, we, though we're sometimes foul-mouthed and sometimes a bit of an asshole in some people's eyes, we generally have a reasonably intelligent and educated group join us. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these folks, they're, maybe the ones that disagree are keeping quiet because they're afraid of you. That must be what it is. Why? Because I'm a big black man? Don't brag. <laughs> It comes naturally. 
Ah. <clears throat> so here's something we could talk about if you don't wearing a corn fed hat. A con fed hat. A Confederate hat. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry. It's a corn Yes. Hat, yeah. Um No, that sounds wrong, me asking that. <laughs> <laughs> well, damn, what's Thanks, stopping you, dude? No, <laughs> well, it, it also makes me sound like I was about to say, you know, since this is probably not in your list of history, while we're waiting for this week in history, we have 15 minutes we could discuss things like what sure. positive things came out of the Civil War, which, of course, everybody's going to go, Travis, asshole, freed the slaves. But besides that, what repercussions of the Civil War happened? And, of course positive in this one is going to be a point of view it's going to be a matter of your perception um true you know looking at our history books everything that came out of it was positive kept the country together rah 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 whereas in the southern basically they were beat down uh, the economy was crippled um oh, what was shit and uh now they had to lose all their low-paying jobs this sounds familiar they lost all the mm -hmm. low-paying jobs to black people Hmm. Sound familiar? Are we talking about McDonald's and minimum wage again? Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a heated topic that'll get somebody's nipples in the right. list. Well, one thing, and, and I'm not justifying racism, but, but one thing people tend to forget is the fallacy of the animal man, okay? And when there's competition out there for jobs to live, to make a living, to even just make it, when there's competition out there for that, one of the very first things we do is fa being fallible creatures is find a common bond with somebody else and say, you're keeping us down and you're giving all the jobs to them. We create a okay. us and them situation. I exactly. We create yeah. a us and them situation. We auto segregate and not by yes. race, just by asshole grouping. <laughs> I watched The Help the other night, which I'd seen. It movie. It's, I had seen it before. And by the way, some of the movies I tend to watch uh, that I'm actually setting aside for my son when he gets to a certain age, not that he couldn't watch them now, is like The Butler, The Help, Forrest Gump, Saving Private Ryan, because I want him to uh, – Schindler's List. I want him to see the atrocities that humankind consists, uh, does, but also the hope that, that – comes out of it generated from it battles against it i don't know the correct phrasing here um mm -hmm. oh that's an interesting question hold on let's skip what i'm saying about the help yeah well ian yeah. just brought up yeah put that out because i i had this in my notes and i i put it in i took it out and i put it in and took it out and put it in took it out but i i took it out and since you're bringing it up yes read it um uh, didn't Lincoln also have a plan for colonies in South America for black people? And I, I would like to point out, I haven't really gotten into the part where I discussed Lincoln and this wasn't in there. I had taken it out. Um, Lincoln gets a lot of credit for being uh, the great emancipator. <clears throat> right. For obvious reasons. Um, we'll go into further detail about that. But Lincoln was actually a big fucking racist. Okay. Lincoln did not see black people as equal to white people. He never envisioned America where blacks were on this equal footing as white people. Um, he thought that blacks were inferior to white people. Yes, Frederick Douglass was by his side because it was good PR during the Civil War, but he he was like, kind of like Mr. Candy in the movie J The Django, okay? He felt like there was that one in 10,000 exceptional niggers, but for the most part, none of them were no good. Yes, he did try to figure out if he could send blacks back to Africa. He tried to figure out if he could send them to South America. He tried to figure out uh, if he could send them to the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. He tried to figure out if he could sit apart a part of the country and just let them do their own thing. He did not envision an, an America where United. blacks were, were on equal footing as white people. That was actually one of those things in the help that I was going to refer to. There's one point in time where the main female white lead, Skeeter, is reading the law book from Mississippi. And she it narrates it or she reads it out loud. And it says, anybody caught printing or distributing literature 
saying that Negroes and whites are socially equal will be imprisoned. And I turned to Andrea at that point in time and said, can you – I mean I know we live in a imperfect world now, but can you imagine living in that world where you would be imprisoned for even suggesting in writing that all people are equal? Mm. And, and Yeah. Are you crazy? Is this a separate topic? <laughs> Everybody's not equal to me. What's that? Everybody's not equal to me. Oh, well, no. It's, <laughs> the whole thing is we're not created equal, but we sure can heck compete to get equal. Um, but socially. And Von Hegner says, you're correct. The term for sending former slaves to other countries was called colonization. You know, that would be a very interesting alternate history fiction. Mm-hmm. If they did that, Um, I saw I read a book called I can't remember the name, but it had to do with burritos and a cat and time travel. But basically, I went back into time in Nevada, I think it was, and they actually left a pulley in a cave in the past, uh, like caveman days. You know, so we were all uh, Stone Age. And when they came back to the future, the Native Americans were the dominant race because of that one pulley they had figured out certain technology so much earlier that they were the ones that went and colonized europe and enslaved the white man and the whites were a lesser (laughs) race and now in the book they later went back and corrected this but it was a great interesting point of view because you know the native americans were looking at the white people like they were trash and you know just looking for a handout and all that crap but yeah what would that world be like if we had sent blacks to another part of the country. <laughs> then Canada would be like, I'm sorry, A, yo. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would have meant for a very different Mexico if we sent them south into Central America. But I guess the easiest way, go on a boat and drop them in Brazil. But- Wow, if you'd, if you'd sent all your blacks to Central America, you'd have come up with some fucking amazing hip-hop by now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Here's an interesting theorizing question from Kat. I, make- I, I, I was thinking about that just earlier today. Um, how would things have changed had he not been assassinated? Where do you think he would have I... I I don't think it would have been any worse because uh, Lincoln was under a lot of pressure from Northern Republican abolitionists to do certain things. And you got to remember back in those days, a president could serve more than two terms. Right. Okay. So if he went down in history as, as the president that saved the union, and now he goes down in history as the president that emancipated the slaves. He probably would have been looking at a third term. Right. Um, I, I, I don't think it would have been any worse for wear because you got to remember that. Uh, <clears throat> oh, crap. Having a brain block here. Uh, his vice president became president as it, when he was assassinated. Um Oh, damn. Help me out, Ed. <laughs> yeah, or Ian. <laughs> Where's our Google guy, Kevin? Yeah, what? You want me? To... Hang on. Johnson. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Johnson, thank you. you and have the to... same to you, Ed. You have to remember that Johnson was a Democrat. Okay? Even though Lincoln was a Republican, Johnson was a Democrat. <clears throat> <clears throat> and Johnson, I don't think did some of the things in Reconstruction that really should have been done. And uh, uh, it, it might would have been a little bit better un- under Lincoln. I, I don't know that for sure, but he was under a lot of political pressure, and I think he would have made a whole lot different uh, decisions than Johnson. And did. Johnson was impeached? Um, Is that what I'm seeing here? Uh, did somebody say that someplace else? Uh, I just researched. 
I uh, think he, I think he was president. impeached, but it was, it, but it was like, it was like the Bill Clinton thing. He wasn't kicked out of office. It, oh, okay. There were impeachment gotcha. proceedings, but yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, because it's saying you know within six weeks of taking office as vice president, John succeeded to the presidency after Lincoln's assassination. The new president faced difficult, and then I got to go to the link and find out where the hell in the article that was. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, interesting. So I, I don't. It's it's one of the best ways to become a fondly remembered hero president is to get killed while in office. Historically, you've just in that one sentence, you've just changed my mind about having Donald Trump killed. <laughs> yeah, if we look historically, a lot of the presidents, I don't say all because I can't remember who all was assassinated. But I'm thinking of Kennedy and Lincoln. Yeah, we, we tend to martyr our dead. And leader. oddly enough, when, when Kennedy was killed, another Johnson became president. Well, there's a lot of Johnsons out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there are. Sorry, just filling in, feeling Andrea's absence at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> Which I have uh, heard from her. She's not sure if she'll be joining us this evening. She's got some other oh, stuff going on. Okay. Hey, we've all got shit going on. There we yeah. are. <clears throat> Here's what I'll do. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the song now and go into the This Week in History when we come back. And uh, yes, Von Hagner, there's a lot of Johnsons in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another. Wow, that's going to piss off the feminist. <laughs> song, This Week in History. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Um, what is coming up next? Oh, Little Shine Down, song? Simple Man. Oh, yeah, I love this tune. Yeah, we'll be right back. Let's play that, and okay. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab another beer. You okay, Ed? I just closed Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll open it back up. We'll be back. Kevin, keep me as well. Ed fixes his screw up. Okay. <laughs> It's not working, John. Play me off. Ah, Victoria's here. Oh, hey, Victoria. Where is she on Twitch? Uh, I don't know if she's on Twitch or not, but she is here on Facebook. Oh, okay. I should go and say hi. I know what else happened this past week that I didn't talk about. What happened? Hours before the newspaper told me that they're going to cut how much, you know, they're going to let me do the work, I had ordered cigars. So I got a huge shipment of cigars in. Um, still came out to less than $3 a cigar, but I picked up uh, – basically there was one deal where you, where you buy five packs, and you chose six different five packs for this. So I've got – Eight or ten different types of cigars now. So next time, Ed, when we get together to do our cool. live show with the Moonshine and possibly the Filibuster Gin, Whiskey, and Bourbon, I'll have a, a selection. What are they giggling about over here? I, I don't know. I closed Twitch by accident, so I don't know what was oh, talked yeah. about while I was away. <laughs> it's either – I believe it's Meza Dupree says too many Johnsons in the White House. Football says two were remembered fondly after being shot. The other two probably nobody remembers. Yeah, obviously I didn't remember. Uh, Von Hegner and football then McKinley Garfield, they are like bonding because they know shit. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> shot a cat. <laughs> Who shot Garfield with that? <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me go make sure my song. Yeah, we're still in the song. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. Probably after you know oh, twenty gosh. years of Garfield, people are like you ain't funny anymore, you fat orange cat. Hey, Victoria Schultz posted. Reasonably late. Victoria, come on over to Twitch. Next week we'll be doing a whole thing about twitching. <laughs> okay, Kevin, do you want to read your statement and her return statement back? Are we on air at the moment? Oh, we're on Twitch. That's it. Do you, do you want to do it for Twitch? Or do you want to save it for when we come back on air in case she's not on Twitch? Is she on oh, Twitch yet? This is the first Twitch people. So Victoria Schultz 
posted to the Facebook event page, and fashionably late, ready to let Ed educate me. To which Kevin replied, Yeah. Kevin, that's good here. He'll, he'll be strict with you for your tardiness. And Victoria fondly said, My rear burns in anticipation. It could be hemorrhoids. You might want to have it checked. <laughs> Ooh. Really? Hmm. <laughs> Ed so adeptly ignored what I said and moved on with what she meant. <laughs> meat segue. <laughs> Did you say a meat segue? Yes, absolutely. A meat segue. It just slid smoothly in there. <laughs> Are we back to cornhole? I I don't know. Hmm. And somebody's she, gelling. A jelly. She's jelly. I think she means yeah, jelly. She's jelly. Oh, she's jealous. Yes. I'll a... do threesomes. And the Oreos I have tonight are yellow and white, so it's not the right ones to hold up for this conversation. I'll even be in the middle. Oh. So, I'm thinking about so... revamping... Patreon, which I'll talk about in a minute. Well, or third hour, because we're going into the promo and the this week in history thing. So I don't want to get into that now. But I'm thinking about like pushing for the patches and that kind of stuff. I don't know. Everybody here want patches? Talk of the tavern patches, shot glasses, pint glasses. Yeah, I want one. Okay, and we're back with This Week in History. I guess I don't get to ask Ed what happened this week in history, huh? Shit happened, y'all. I think I've got <laughs> this one covered. Did you want to cover that one thing that you have set up there, the first yeah, item? I, I, yeah, I really do, because it, it really, really relates. It um, does. Uh, October 19, 1864, the Battle of Cedar, well, the Battle. Battle of Cedar Creek. Um and Jubal Early, Confederate General Jubal Early's attempt to capture Phil Sheridan. A uh, little quick brief about the battle. It happened just less than 20 miles away from me, a little place called uh, Cedar Creek. Uh, there was a, a farm there, a uh, plantation there. And it was Jubal Early's headquarters, uh, not Jubal Early's, God, Phil Sheridan's headquarters uh, during the Civil War, the Valley Campaign. Um, Phil Sheridan was, I guess I should say what side everybody's on so everybody knows, was a Union general. He had been given orders by Grant to go through the Shenandoah Valley and make things so scarce that a crow could not fly over without carrying his own rations. Wow. And that's what he was literally doing. They, what they couldn't take and use for the army, they killed the livestock or burned the crops. Um, and his headquarters, as I said, was there at a plantation at Cedar Creek, near Middletown, Virginia. And uh, Jubal Early came up with a plan. We'll surprise him. We'll capture Phil Sheridan. And we can stop this shit. Good plan. So he started his movement at 1 a.m. The battle commenced at 3 a.m. And uh, the Southern Army, the Confederates, were went in the field. There was only one problem. Phil Sheridan was like 10 miles away in Winchester. <laughs> uh, Sheridan heard the cannons from a distance, start to receive reports that there's a battle commencing. Union soldiers are getting their asses kicked. He op- hopped on his horse, took off with about eight men, met up with no other than uh, George Armstrong Custer who was in the Union Army at that time in a, in a cavalry unit with about 300 cavalrymen. So uh, they charged down the Cedar Creek to the battlefield, rallied the Union forces, and uh, won the day. <clears throat> Keep it simple. Uh, every year for I don't know how many years now, there's a reenactment uh, on that battlefield. This past weekend, the Cedar Creek Battlefield Foundation, just a week before the reenactment, had received a threat letter that attendees to the battlefield, something would happen to attendees to this reenactment if they put on the reenactment. Uh, they said, screw you, we're going to put it on anyway. 
uh, sometime late in the afternoon, around 4 p.m. on Saturday, a device was found. Uh, authorities aren't officially saying what it is or whether it was a bomb. They just say the Virginia State Police rendered it safe. So right. some people have said pipe bombs. I even have heard stories that a woman actually picked it up and she was Virginia lucky that it didn't go FBI off because of the mercury help. device and it failed. USA 9 but, that uh, none of that has been released officially. Um, uh, it was late in the day. Most of the reenactment was over. They did have to evacuate part of the battlefield. The next day, the authorities canceled uh, the reenactment. It was supposed to be a two-day event. So the general public was not allowed in the next day. <clears throat> this is terrorism, okay? Mm -hmm. When you make a threat in, in a way that the general public can't go around doing what they normally do for recreational activities or their normal day, this is terrorism. Um, it, it's a shame. It's a pity. It's a shame. These reenactors come from all over the damn country. Okay. And yes, while they generally, in one place, they portray Union soldiers, in another place, they portray Southern soldiers. If they get to a reenactment and there's not enough of one side or the other, they'll change coats even. They don't they fucking do. care. <laughs> <laughs> they just enjoy doing this. They enjoy doing this. They enjoy showing history. It, it's a good thing to take the kids to. They can pick up shit, learn, put on those heavy ass wool coats that they wore in the middle of July. Don't know how they did that, stupid motherfuckers. It's it's, it's a good educational thing. So it's a shame that it got ruined. However, there's a, there's a strong tradition in this country of LARPing, live action role play. Mm -hmm. um, it it doesn't mean that there's a large section of England that are genuinely worried our country is in threat from orcs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, they should be. Okay, it's kind of ignorant for them not to be well, concerned. No, there's, there's no need. Have you seen our barbarian berserkers? We've no. got no worry about these orc motherfuckers. We've no, got this but cover. I haven't seen your orcs either. <laughs> uh, my, the cool thing I, here, though, is <laughs> yes, go on. The, reenactor, the reenactors got up Saturday morning, even though there was no audience, had their breakfast, said their little prayers, shouted USA, saying God bless America. Sing the Star Pang Spangled Batter. Sing Dixie. Yeah, I'm going off here, man. <laughs> and that afternoon, they put on their reenactment anyway, even though there was no one there to watch it. They said, no, screw I'm... you. You're not going to stop us. Pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. And, and real quick, and then we'll get to the next article here, the next piece of what's going on. Um, apparently... I, I don't, again, I, it might be Mesa Dupree or it might be Mesa Dupree. Could be Jar Jar Binks right there. I was going to say that you just sounded just like Jar Jar Binks yeah. then, which is not a good thing. Don't do not do that again tonight, all right? Well, they said they could sit in your lap, Ed. And uh, Von wow. Hagner has offered to take Mesa Dupree up on that one. And so, yeah, there's like really cool flirting. And by the way, football says Scorched Earth campaign similar to the one in Georgia referring to what you're describing initially when you started. Yes. Uh, um, the same orders were given to Sherman, basically. Yeah. Okay. More on that? Uh, that's all of that. Okay. You I'm got gonna, some stuff, right? Yeah, I'm going to cover two things here real quick that are semi-related, and then I'm going to have Kevin cover a news story for us. This one is only a brief mention. Florida has declared a state of emergency in a county <laughs> ahead of of a speech of Richard Spencer, who you might remember him from Charlottesville, Virginia in late August. He participated in the white nationalist rally there. And Florida has spent, it said, it's, it, said it expects to spend $500,000 on security. And they're activating the Florida National Guard to help with security if it's needed. And there's not much more to that. I just went, oh, huh. Now, in another story, pop over here. This is kind of the other side of the coin of vaguely relating. Marvel's Black Panther trailer released today. And, Ed, I know you've been looking forward to this movie just in general, right? Mm -hmm. So, And, by the way, uh, they're calling it like the most visually beautiful Marvel movie yet. Oh, cool. So, cool. yeah. And that yeah. sounds good. Huge yeah. Black Panther fan when I was a kid in the comic books. Um, 
don't want to turn this into a black white thing. But when I was a kid in the comic books, you only had the Falcon and Black Panther. That right. was it. Right. So yeah, <laughs> huge fan. Unless you watch Super Friends, then you had Black Tornado that they made just for the show. Just like the Indian guy, they made him just for the show. Okay, and that's the two bits of news there. Kevin, you got a current event that was taking place over there in your neck of the woods. Yeah, yeah um, we've had a bit of a weird day today. Um, odd sun, weird skies, everything's kind of been you oddly say sort the of blocked. apocalypse blackly. arrived. Go ahead. Well, it's funny you should say that. On Twitter, uh, just several phrases have been trending over here today. I mean, it's to do with stormophilia, but yes, the, the phrase apocalypse has been trending today on Twitter. Um, we've had red sky, red moon as well. Essentially, the skies over England today have had a very weird orange cast to them, and the sun, even uh, as late as sort of like midday, early afternoon at its brightest, has been very red and orange in colour. It's to do with the fact that the hurricane activity from Ophelia uh, has whipped up dust from the Sahara and also debris from the Portugal and Spain region at the moment, where there's been. Uh, the usual sort of widespread summer forest fire. So there's a lot of ash and debris on the ground there that's been whipped into the air by high winds. So what we're essentially getting is a dust cloud over parts of Europe at the moment that's sort of affecting the wavelength of the refracted light from the sun. And so we're seeing some really odd skies anyway. Um, it's been uh, almost like a foggy day with orange street lamps on, if that makes any sense. In fact, somebody earlier on today commented to me that walking through the town here uh, to go and get their shopping, it was a bit like walking through some kind of uh, Hollywood Hammer horror film where you were expecting Jack the Ripper to step out from an alleyway at any moment. You know, there was the whole pea soup fog thing going on and the, the weird odd orange incandescent lighting. So, yeah, just a, a perfectly explained natural see, phenomenon. But that's so cool and cool. you're so lucky. Here, when we have hurricanes, you don't get dust clouds from the Sahara and forest fire yeah, like, debris oh, yeah, from other just, countries. Yeah, this this no. city you used know, to be here. You, yeah. get, you get, like, dolphins and trees um, and alligators. I'm going to post a there's actually we we're quite lucky here on the island there's a very big natural amateur photographer so, uh, society because it's quite a well-known place of natural beauty so i'm just going to post up just so people got an idea of what i'm talking about some of the weird skies that some of those people have captured from around the island and, and do you want to tell them the name um, of the island considering the it's the topic? island yeah rather topically yeah it's the <laughs> isle of Wight. Um, although that is W I G H T white, as in a white or spirit, um, because they in Saxon times in the there. island was considered to be a, an evil place that was haunted by bad spirits, and so people who lived on the, the main part of England avoided the island as being haunted. Nice, not just by pale natives either. <laughs> no, although well, no, having said that, okay. <laughs> yes. We, um, so let's see here. We got another little bit of cool scientific history that happened today. Well, it was announced today. Back in August, on August 17th, LIGO and Virgo, which are astronomy bigwigs, they observed an event in the sky. And they basically called every observatory on the planet and went, look over there. And all the observatories went, we're on it. And what they recorded, what they saw, is two neutron stars colliding. And this created gravitational waves. It was the strongest gravitational signal ever observed. It lasted 100 seconds, and it had gamma ray bursts. So it's the first piece of evidence that um, GRBs, which, what is it, GRB here? Hold on. Grab, yeah, any neutron stars colliding. Oh, oh, sorry. Um... Gamma radiation bands, I guess, burst, are produced by neutron star collections. Now, why collisions? Why is this important? They are saying this is equivalent to when Galileo first pointed a telescope up or any of these great astronomical discoveries. This has proven things. This has given us so much more information that we never had saw before. So... Yeah, it's a piece of history went on today, folks. Nice. Next thing going on is uh, I got I got a question. Real yes, quick. Sir. Oh, first of all, 
Good night, Jean. She's leaving us. Oh, good night, Jean. Oh, good night, Jean. Hello, Robin. You're late, damn it. Um, uh, Mesa Dupree. She's she she. I guess it's a she. Mesa Dupree is the way it is pronounced. Very good. Would you care to indulge your actual identity? I like to know. You don't I like to know who I'm flirting with. <laughs> and if it's a guy, I'll flirt with you too. <laughs> That's true. We all will. We just want it all out there, if you know what I mean. We don't have a problem either way. <laughs> so I'll give them a chance to answer that, and I'll jump into the next topic. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Which uh, flirting is a is the worst possible segue into this, but. The past 24 to 36 hours, Facebook and other social me- media has been saturated with hashtag MeToo. Now, a lot of people, when they put up the MeToo, they put the paragraph explanation that this is somebody who has been sexually abused in some form at some point in their life. Generally women, though a few people have went, men can do it too. And I've seen men putting it up going, I have been an asshole in the past. Now, the only one reason I want to mention this is because most of the women I know, not all of them, but most of them in my life that I've had this t- discussion with, what do you got, Ed? Somebody says, what, did you figure out who Ron it is? Ron Hagner's girl. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, lovely. Word on. <laughs> um, most women I know that I've had the discussion with have said, yeah, something at some point in time happened. And... The Me Too thing is bringing awareness to how common this has been. And awareness is a good thing because awareness is quite often the precursor to being able to take care of that issue without having to club people down. And that's really all I want to say. Let people know what is going on. And they're like, Me Too what? Me Too hungry? Or whatever. Now, for some weird news. Me so horny. That'd be Me Too horny. (laughs) So, in weird news this week, since Andrea is not here, the worst pseudoscience of the year award has been announced. So, there is a group, the Skeptic Magazine, that every year they put together the Rusty Razor Award. <laughs> and this year, thanks to people's voting, Gwyneth Paltrow. And her website, Goop, has won this award. Now, her website has uh, offered things in the past, such as uh, it rose to new levels of infamy this year with numerous stories of bogus science. Like, they sold jade eggs to insert in your yawny, which is Goop talk for vagina. Then they claimed NASA's endorsement for some bogus... Wasn't it for, like, a huge amount of money to... Crazy it's, amount of money. It's jade and a vagina. You put them two together, it's expensive. Okay, sure. <laughs> so the extraction fees. Yeah, yeah, emergency. Unless, and we actually, no, I, I mean, I suppose I'm thinking about that like a Brit. I suppose you Americans normally have quite easy access to long barbecue tongs, don't you? We do. We, we do. do. And also, yeah. you know, you could just take them and bop them on the head and hope it pops out the other <laughs> end. <laughs> Um, they also claimed the website Goop, Gwyneth Paltrow's website, also claimed to have NASA's endorsement for some bogus healing stickers, which, by the way, NASA refuted. Some he- they- that was, hang on, hang on. Mm-hmm. Healing stickers. Yeah, that's a link. I can well, so pop I, it open and see what so the I, hell it means. So I, so I buy a sticker and then I get off of them and then I stick it on me and it heals me. Um. Okay. I got so, something I'd like to stick on her. <laughs> there, they I'd, see. I'd break her. <laughs> they were selling stickers to put on your body, which supposedly rebalance the energy frequency in our bodies. Because who doesn't need a bit of that? And it also recommended drink plenty of water to increase the body's natural conductivity. Um, so there we go. But they also were selling psychic vampire repellent. Always handy to have, guys, really. Ask anybody who has some and see if they've seen any psychic vampires. 
Isn't it weird how every show we come up with something that ties into either the next week's show or the previous ones? Because we mentioned Psychic Vampires last week. We did, we did. It's a, But anyhow, congratulations to Gwyneth Paltrow for winning the yeah. Rocky Razor Award for pseudo a, heart, a heartily deserved award, which I congratulate them on selecting you for, yes. Absolutely. And then uh, I think we're up to birthdays at this point in time. Oh, birthdays. Ed's got to pay attention again. He zoned out. Oh, God damn. Uh, <laughs> scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Scroll uh, scroll I, I didn't do any birthdays because I got all this history shit going on. But I do want to give a happy anniversary shout out to Scott and Nicole Lothgren. Love you guys. Hey, I know hope, them. hope to get together soon. It's been a long fucking time. Yeah. I got one. What do you got? Uh, it's my friend James Menzies' birthday today. He's a night porter at the hotel where I work. So there's a slim possibility if he's actually remembered what I told him earlier today that he might be listening while he's working tonight. So if you're actually bothered, James, happy birthday. If you're listening to this back on the podcast afterwards, fuck you, you slack bastard. There we go. <laughs> it's good birthday wish- wishes all the way around. Yeah, yeah. Feel the love, James. Hey, look, there's one of those bursts. Uh, someone gave someone gave us a burst. Uh, well, six year old man did followed. I miss that? So Wasn't your face? You know what? I'm going back to birthdays. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, fine. To my friend Amy Smith Lyles, who I spent a little bit of this weekend with at a Indian festival. Happy birthday to her. Two of my fat boy brothers, Bearded Beast and Skunk Whisper, Blake Turner and Jim <laughs> Africano. Skunk Whisperer, that's an amazing name. He does um, basically, you know, the animal control if you have some kind of crazy Oh, thing. right. Okay, yeah. But he's no, really that makes good more sense. with the animals in the sense that, you know, these wild animals, he's able to, I don't want to say handle them effectively, but handle them effectively without, you know, them being terrorizing and spraying him or whatever. Um a gentleman I used to work with, Elias Ariala, and then one of the musicians we played, Joseph Vortek, has a birthday this week. So happy birthday to all our birthday people. Happy birthday to you. Oh, and Chuck just would, joined uh, us. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Hey, hey Demo. I would do the, dis- the seductive little strip that comes with a happy birthday song, but uh, no twitch will ban us because I haven't got any pasties for my nipples. So. And Kat cheered a bit for the birthday, so... Good job there. Yeah. Yeah. And Thanks, uh, Kat. By the way, going back to the Me Too, Talking Towie, when, said Monkey See, Monkey Me Too. We debated on discussing that mm. angle and decided just to go with the positive on this one. But if you're saying what I think you're saying, yeah, we thought about that. Um, I think that's it for this week. Like a lot of things to do with this show, we thought about it. We thought about what we'd say about it, and we thought... Let's not talk about that one. Yeah, let's just hit the positive side and move on. <laughs> and then Victoria posts the uh, more vampire stuff. And kinky vampire down, stuff. Uh, kinky vampire stuff, like like you do. Wait, hang on, I'm in the wrong place again. Okay, you Why go is there. I'm going to play a little Charlie. Wait. I'm going to play a little Charlie. Charlie Daniels with Devil Went Down to Georgia. All right. So we'll be yeah, right back. With and I can't hear it. Ed on top. <laughs> Okay. Time. Uh, this one is three and a half. All right, be right back. Go on. And coming back over here. I love the cheering thing. That's great. So since we got our Twitch people, who are generally our, our strong followers and supporters and friends anyway. So with Patreon, if you guys don't know what patreon.com slash talk of the tavern is, you can go there and throw a buck at us and it repeats every month or, or, or hundreds of dollars, whatever you want. Um, and we have been looking at getting certain swags, such as shot glasses or pint glasses, but probably patches to start with that people could purchase and show that, you know, they're a hot toddy or whatever. So I'm thinking about revamping the Patreon page. So that's one of our goals. Now, as our regular listeners and kind of the ones that are here for most things, what do you guys think? Any interest in that or? Should I just go buy the patches and keep them all for myself? 
Yeah. We'll give you a second to answer while I go check and see what somebody posted on that. Yeah, sorry. I was distracted for a moment there. I started following you, and then I'm trying you, to keep up with answering little bits. On, no, I'm doing Facebook stuff. Sorry. I'm just, trying to get that flow. Just, just because uh, it's hard to tell these days because I'm not using Twitch. I don't know which of these people on Facebook are also using Twitch. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm keeping up with replying to little comments every now and then in case some of them are only on there. You know, the skeletal art here that they're showing, the naked chicks with skeletons, I think that's no different wait, than wait, the... Wait, hold, wait, wait. Hold up. Hang on. I, I haven't even seen the vampire stuff yet. Where is well, all that's, this? That's what it is. She says you tried to post it last week, it, and it's just pictures, Victorian-era pictures of naked women with skeletons. Uh, hold up. I think I just... Ah, right. Here we are. Right. Okay. And I'm thinking this is not much different from what we do now. They just finally got cameras and could do it. Yeah. I kind of like it. It's kind of fun. These days, it'd just be some dude in a skeleton suit. Well, some of them are people in a skeleton suit or a double exposure. So okay, that's more I, I haven't opened the, yeah, I haven't opened the link. So. That's a good idea, Win. Uh, Major Dupree, we considered pins, but frankly, the price of the pins are – well, I mean, you can do the little cheap ones. And we've had them available. We've had a lot of this stuff available on Cafe Press, and nobody goes there. Nobody buys. So to order it ourselves and pay money ahead of time, I want to make sure there's some interest. Now, for the patches, here's the deal. If we order 10, and I send two over to Kevin, two to Ed, keep some for myself, send them to a few of the other people that are just always encouraging and supportive, it's going to cost me, like, ten dollars or more per patch whereas for like 215 probably slightly more than that because one of us annoyingly lives three and a half thousand miles away. well i would just have them sent to me and then yeah but but uh if i order a hundred it will only cost me 215 dollars so looking at that and hold on we're coming back we'll go to the topic we'll get back to this next song okay welcome back you got some more ed do i ever do I you? never run out. Do I? Would yeah. I? Yeah. He's a one man stamina machine. Give me five seconds rest and I'm right back for some <laughs> more. Um, interview for the vampire, you know? I want some more. Mm. I don't I see my brain just my brain just went to Oliver, the musical. Please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> Specifically the musical as opposed to, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Oh, it's a musical version. All right, now 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 we'll get into the the difficult law stuff about the war, and, and I'm sure Ed would have a lot of opinions on this as well as football dude um, will have a lot of opinions on this. Did the South have the right to succeed? You know, constitutional historians don't always agree on this. Um, a few things to point out: uh, the Treaty of Paris, which formally ended the American uh, War for Independence recognized each original 13 colony as its own sovereignty. That was that war where we, where we beat up on Kevin's people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the reason why those colonies came together to form a union was pretty much safety in numbers. <clears throat> that way, if England decided, hey, I want Virginia, I'm going to come over there and take Virginia back, they got to fight all of them all over again. Um, but all those motherfuckers couldn't agree on anything, really. <laughs> uh, it, it was a wonder they was ever ever able to come up with a constitution in the first place. True um, story. Yeah. Uh, but by the time things come to the Civil American Civil War, uh, just less than 100 years later, not even 100 years later, the typical attitude was, we joined this union, we can leave this union. Makes sense to me. Right. Um, but it's one of the things, illegal to quit the U.S. Well, and that's where constitutional historians don't always agree. Interesting ah. thing to point out, Mason was totally against putting language in the Constitution that would disallow a state from leaving the Union. Totally against it. And he's considered the uh, father of the Constitution. So, <clears throat> Yeah, I think... Uh, 
if we went, hey, you guys can be part of the talk of the tavern club, but you could never leave. <laughs> that would uh, kind mm. of be illegal. <laughs> It'd be like the Hotel California of radio shows. Hey, there you go. Uh, yeah, I guess that's what the United States does. <laughs> like being a biker gang. Uh, <clears throat> have we had any feedback on that before I move but on? You, you, you can leave a biker gang. You just don't want to know how. Usually by being killed, right? Uh, Von Hagner's <clears throat> pointing out Madison, among others, believe that states did have the right to leave. Um, when you when you read a lot of uh, 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 Thomas Jefferson's works, it, it, it's kind of confusing. It's it's you read some of Thomas Jefferson's stuff, and he's like, okay, he's saying they do have the right to leave, and then you read something else, so like he's saying, oh no, maybe they shouldn't have have the right to leave. So it is kind of confusing on what our forefathers intended. Uh, when Did they, you see Wynn's comment there above Von Hegner? Uh, uh, is that talk, yeah, talking Talking Howie? Uh, Which, by yes. the way, Wynn is... None of them were ever tried for treason. Uh, right. Because succession was never sp- explicitly forbidden in the Constitution. And for it, everybody listening not. on the radio, um, she said Jeff Davis was never tried for treason because he would have been acquitted because secession wasn't explicitly forbidden by the Constitution. And, and, and yes, football player, you're right about Jefferson. His mind changed many times, uh, just as his mind changed on slavery. He, he went back and forth on that issue uh, many times. Speaking of Thomas Jefferson, that mm-hmm. is. Uh, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights was viewed as a document of the rights that each state was agreeing to give its citizenry in order to be a member of the union. Uh, and when, when you look at it that way, it's kind of like, okay, if I agree upon this shit, I can be a part of the union. If I don't agree upon this shit, well, I'd just jump up and leave the damn union. You know, so... Um, but we've made it more black and white since then. It is we somewhere have, in our we, laws now. We have like, nope, made it more black and white. You can't fucking since. leave. Yes. Not by your own choice. And we're never going to let you go. Like, like, it's like Rick rolling. Sorry, I got mm. nets. <laughs> Did you get some of mine? I thought you were going to say yeah, gas. Yeah, they, they, they must have flew through, mm. uh, <laughs> through Skype here, over here. <laughs> Goddamn Skype moths. <laughs> mm. All right, where's my document? Okay, here we go. Uh, Southern atti- attitude was that the War of Independence was fought because of unjust taxes. And now the Union, the North, is giving us the same bullshit that we want our freedom from England with. So guess what? We're just going to leave. Screw this. We're going to leave. So how did slavery become the main issue? What was Lincoln's stance? And what was the Southern view? Uh, nor- Northern abolitionists pushed slavery to the forefront of the war and used it as a rallying cry. It's that damn plain and simple. Abolitionists did not want slavery. They did not want slavery. They did not want slavery. This war has now broke out against the South, which has slavery. Hey, we're fighting to free the slaves. It's, it's that damn simple. And that's what's been taught in our history books for over 100 years now. So a political spin doctor came along and went, <clears throat> Let's say this instead. It looks better. <laughs> went, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, human rights. Wait a minute. Does this mean we have to free our own too? Oh, we'll cover uh, that later. There were many Southern po- politicians and generals that believed the first shot should never have been fired by the South until slavery had been abolished so that the North could not make slavery a rallying cry. Um, you don't look ahead and see those things. You see they're robbing us financially. <laughs> they're bullying us. Um, we, we learned that from the British, the bullying part. The bullying part, yeah. <laughs> You've well, really was, gone it, slack on that, haven't you? Well, recently, yeah. I mean, it's a shame. It was like a national art form at one point. Mm-hmm. I guess we showed you up and you went, well, we're not going to compete with that. <laughs> If I, 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 I think I've mentioned this on the show before, but one of my favorite comedians makes an analogy about um, the special relationship between America and Britain, as it's sometimes referred to. And he said that that relationship is essentially means nowadays that America has taken the place of Britain and is now the schoolyard bully who goes around demanding your lunch money. 
and Britain has become the fat kid who leans around from behind him and goes, yeah. <laughs> By the way, Jamin says the constitu- Constitution specifically omitted the Perpetual Union Clause, right. which had been in the Articles of Confederation. Right. What is the Perpetual Union Clause? You couldn't leave. Okay, but that was in the Articles of Confederation? Yeah, in the original Articles of Confederation. So it's not yeah. Perpetual Union like watching two dogs fucking them. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. It, it's similar. Just, just want to clear, end just want to clear that up. Somebody gets fucked. Somebody gets fucked. Yeah. <laughs> One of them is made to be the bitch. <laughs> so actually, it's a lot like it. Yeah. Okay. No, you're right, Kevin. You go ahead. <laughs> Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy, would not push the issue of slavery because he felt that each state should make decisions themselves. Uh, if you, if you've ever read anything about the South during the Civil War, states' rights, states' rights, states' rights, and they pretty much felt like they were being fucked uh, by the Union on states' rights. Therefore, it should be up to each and every individual state to decide whether or not they want to hate slavery. Um, a good point to mention: before Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, there were several states in the South that were working on their own emancipation proclamations. Um, Tennessee probably would have been the first state to release an emancipation proclamation in the South had they not been already taken over by the Union. Uh, They were well on their way of issuing an emancipation proclamation. Uh, We'll talk about Tennessee later on when it comes to black Confederates also. Um, As I mentioned above, Shots were fired in April of 61, Fort Sumter. The war was won. Uh-oh. Oh, what happened? Oh, oh there, you're back. Okay. Hey, you, we... <laughs> you froze. You were saying... Uh... Hey. Did I freak? Yeah, so the, the government surveillance took over for a moment. All right. <laughs> They're like, what did you hear last? It's a black man talking. <laughs> Quick, shut that shit down. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a, black man saying, a black man saying that the, the, the damn uh, Civil War was not about slavery. What the fuck? You know, <laughs> uh, anyway, an hour and a half. They're like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> don't know where you lost me. Washington, D.C. Shots, shots were fired on Fort Sumner in, eight, in uh, 1861. Washington, D.C. didn't end slavery until 1862. I mean, come on. The nation's capital, the, the capital of the Union didn't free its slaves till a year after the war has broken out, and the war is supposed to be about slavery. Doesn't sound right to me. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Well, we meant to do it. We just got busy. (laughs) And even when D.C. abolished slavery, it was part of a buyback program. The federal government literally had to buy the slaves from all the slave owners in D.C. in order for them to release it. Lincoln had tried this several times. Uh, it, it was another one of Lincoln's plans. Can can we buy back all the slaves from everybody in the South? Then what do you do? Put Inter- them in a warehouse? <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to ship them away. Oh, yeah, that's you know, right. <laughs> you know, uh, Lincoln's, Lincoln's offer to end slavery would not have ended slavery until 1900, though. <laughs> so... Uh, Robert E. Lee so freed did, his slaves. And, go ahead. Where did that change, though? If Lincoln's thing wouldn't have freed the slaves till 1900. It, it never made it to Congress. Okay, so whose plan it, was it? Congress that, was basically saying, are you kidding? We're going to pay for <laughs> for all those fucking people to be free? Yeah, it, it never made it to Congress. Okay. So they would have gone to the government, been government property? And slavery wouldn't have been abolished until 35 years later? Well, it was it was a grad, gradual buyback program. They wouldn't have bought like all slaves. They would have bought part of the slaves. People that were born into slavery would have remained slaves until a certain age. I don't remember exactly what that age was, but the drop dead date was Probably 1900. Age of majority. If, if um, you hadn't reached that age by 1900, then you were automatically freed. And hello, George. no more people could have been born into slavery. Gotcha. Um, I remember. I I did a news story just a couple weeks ago on Ed. I think I talked to you about this. Carter, the third, who actually freed his slaves. And it was 
late 1700s when he did this. And when he died, his son actually took the decision to court to have it overturned, saying mm-hmm. those are my property. But mm-hmm. in this local area, you know, we had we have many families here that come from that that decision. And well, by the way, I- Hello to Anali, who has joined us. Yes, hello Anali. Uh, a- another point on that. Mm-hmm. Um, a-, a lot of people think blacks, the only way they could be free was escape and run away to the north. Not true. Uh, Virginia had a higher population of free blacks than any other state in the Union prior to the Civil War. Hold on, I've got to address this. Um, mm-hmm. We do have beer, Anali. Talk of the Tavern, if you check out the description <laughs> below the little video feed there, you'll see a description, you know, uh, lets you know a little bit about us and what we do, our schedule, etc. So, yeah, we have beer, We I'm smoking a pipe, we're having drinks, they're drinking Jack Daniels tonight. So, this is the show. Tonight's topic, though, is Confederate history by a black man, because Ed is very well educated and knowledgeable on this, so we're going through it. No, I, I I'm black. Yeah, and Kevin is black. In case you hadn't noticed that bit, he's black. Look, look closer. It's oh, not I just shadows. That, I stuff. thought that was you, Kevin. No, no, I'm I'm hung like I'm black. Ah, oh. with a rope. And yeah, and because of the yeah. topic, I'm drinking out of a mason jar. There we go. For sure, I got to blend in. So, so anyhow, and only pardon us while we jump back to the topic. Feel free to jump in, but talk of the tavern. We're loose. We swear, we're loose like horse. Right. Wait. Relax. Yeah. Too. Okay. Ed, go on. Loose like a horse. I'm sorry. Uh, Was it too soon? Uh-uh. <laughs> no, uh, Robert E. Lee freed, freed his slaves in 1862. Uh, Stonewall Jackson made sure that wages were paid to any man of color that defended the Southern cause, slave or free. Uh, interesting point there. Unlike the Union Army, Blacks that served in the Confederate Army received a wage equal to that of the white soldiers that were serving in the Mm. Confederate Army. (laughs) Well, that went downhill since then, didn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, In the early days of the war, Lincoln wrote a letter to Horace Greeley. I think, Travis, this is what we spoke of earlier stating that if he could preserve the Union by keeping the institution of slavery, then he would do so. If he could preserve the Union by ending the institution of slavery, then he would do so. If he could preserve the Union by keeping slavery in some areas and and abolishing it in others, then he would do so. Lincoln's only concern for the war was to preserve the Union. He did not want to go down in history as the president that allowed the Union to break apart. Which... I, I, I hate to agree with that concept, but as a president, that is really your your gig to keep the mm-hmm. country going. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Morally, sure, we could debate the moral side, but politically, pff, we still have horrible – More life. Morally, Lincoln did not like slavery. He felt like it was a scourge. It was a bad mark on man mm-hmm. to have slavery, but – you know, whatever I got to do to save the union. He he really didn't give a shit one way or the other. <laughs> did he own slaves? <laughs> no. Okay. No. No. He Which... he did feel like slavery was a scourge, and uh, uh, just bad. But uh, he didn't think black people were all that great. Right. You you mentioned that he felt they were inferior. Yeah. By the way, yeah. a quick side note: Mark Twain, who I realized was a little bit later, but. He was very much for the equality of black men and women, but he, as well as you know, women's rights. But he felt Native Americans were an inferior and savage yes. race. And some books are well, Huck Finn is being removed from a number of schools it because really? it can, it contains the word nigger. Well, I thought they just uh, re-edited and took the word out. Oh, I had that not happened heard like five that. years ago. Uh, I, I read today that uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, which was required reading when I was in school way back in, in those mm-hmm. days, but that is also starting to be removed from a number of school libraries because it contains the word nigger. Stop being so fucking sensitive, people. <clears throat> Please realize to use any word hateful is hateful. So, 
to take so away does every bit of hip hop. I don't see them going around searching kids' bedrooms, taking away their goddamn CD collection. <laughs> True, true. You true, should listen true. to some of the stuff I got on Pandora. <laughs> 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 Which, by the way, speaking of hateful things, God, I very rarely do. <laughs> this is the 12th anniversary to the day that I left my ex. <laughs> Con- congratulations. Oh, I, I, I meant to mention it this week in history. <laughs> Gosh, I won't yeah. say I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I won't say I'm sorry, but I won't say I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what you mean, and, and I appreciate both sides of the sentiment. <laughs> but anyhow, go on, Ed. What else you got? Oh, wait, uh, it's time for a song. Then we come back and wrap up the topic, or drag it into third hour. Uh, okay. So let's play John Denver. Thank God I'm a country boy. And yeah. we'll be right back. You know what? I like this song. Be right back. And since we're on this now, yeah, I meant to mention that this week in history because it it fits. It's not anything I celebrate. Matter of fact, I didn't remember until Facebook went, you moved into this house on that date. I'm like, oh, and I moved into that house mm. because I left. How long have we got for this song? I don't know about this long. Um, about six inches. 245. Ooh. 2.45, just enough time. I'm going to go and make coffee. If I'm not back, I'm going to mute my mic so okay. I don't come clattering back in while cool. you're on air. Oh, that's all right. We don't care. Ed, Ian made a no, comment here. No, fuck it, yeah. Do you want to save mm-hmm. it for when we get back? Uh, but it seems like the bulk of the Northern Conference Breakers are nationalist natives. From the, yeah. Uh, we, we can, well, well again, how, it was a money thing. How much material do you have? Uh, probably at least another hour. Okay, so we are going into the third hour at the topic. So let's so, let's save it for when we get back, and we'll just okay. Um, till then, now we got a little more time to pay a little more attention to Anali. If Anali is still around, Anali I'm, might have been like, "Screw this, I'm leaving." What do you mean? Oh no, uh, football player. Would you care to elaborate on that? Uh, the, to Kill a Mockingbird is the new one being removed? Ian's, uh, well, oh, no, he, okay. he said it right as we were saying it, but uh, uh, he's, somebody, he's someone else that has a lot of extensive knowledge on the war of northern aggression. Oh, Travis already drank something. I, I wonder what you already drank. what I drink? Oh, no, the uh, <laughs> Anali asked, how come there's not beer? Ah, and okay. I'm like, we do, and you have Jack Daniels, and blah, blah, blah. No, no, he's gone. Um, elaborate on a uh, football player. Northern carpet beggars were nationalistic natives from the cities who didn't appreciate uh, Ian's comment, basically. When you have a great night, when do me a favor. Before you leave, please post your channel in the chat and encourage people to go over there, because I haven't set up where I could do little cheer things. That'll be next week's show where we're talking about how to Twitch. So, and I'll learn how to program it in so I can just automatically, whenever you watch, say, this is her. Boom. Yay. And have a good night. Sweet dreams. Don't think of that Ed sandwich that we were talking about earlier. (laughs) Oh, hold on. How long is the song? Oh, we're coming back in 20 seconds. I was like, now I got to pee. That's okay. During the next song in 15 minutes, when we go into the third hour, Kevin will stay here and you guys can chat while I pick right, it up back. Chat. Okay, we're coming back right about now. Thank God I'm a Country Boy by John Denver. Mm-hmm. What a great song. Just happy without being dickish at all. But then again, I think that was like his whole gig. Yeah. It, it was kind of funny. Uh, uh, Andrea mentioned while we were trying to pick songs for the show tonight, Country Roads, mm-hmm. um, which which is a nice little country song. However, you know, uh, the union broke the law and they allowed West Virginia to succeed from Virginia. So it become could become its own state. So uh, and it's a reference to West Virginia. So it doesn't quite fit. Uh. And, it, and, and it had a fucked up name to begin with. And later they changed it to West Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, do you want to go ahead and read off Ian's statement and then football plays? 
uh, uh, Ian's statement. I'll have to look it up again. Uh, we can forget that part of it. But <laughs> it seems that the bulk of the northern car- carpet beggars were nationalistic natives from the cities who didn't appreciate the all men are equal ideal. Uh, now, and, do you want to well, explain real quick what northern carpet beggars? Uh, carpet beggars were simply the people that came down after the war. Uh, came down? So they left from the, the north, north to the south. south. Okay, yeah, on. from the north to the south after the war. Gotcha. Okay. To, to pretty much, they were northern businessmen or whatever. To pretty much just take advantage of 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 the war and yeah, the struggles that the south was gotcha. going through after the war. Let's yeah. go to some hostile takeovers while it's open. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, we still have it in northern Virginia today, as. Uh, Football players pointing out nothing's changed. Just look at the current divide between Dems and Re- Republicans. Currently, all that has changed is the names have flipped. That's correct. <laughs> uh, and, and we do hear this argument a lot. Uh, um, um, Lincoln was a Republican. Most of the abolitionists during the Civil War uh, uh, were Republicans. Uh, the South was heavily Democratic. Uh, th- there's there is a debate of the realigning of the parties and now supposedly the Democrats are supposed to be the freedom party and the Republicans are supposed to be the racist. Uh, I'm not so sure I, I 100% agree with that. Go ahead, Travis. With uh, your question. Chuck Schwab said Robert E. Lee almost commanded the union army, but sided with the South on the issue of states rights. And as a thank you, the union turned his estate into Arlington national cemetery. Yes, that that is true. Uh, Robert E. Lee was asked to command the Union Army before the war started, but his answer simply was, "Whatever Virginia does, I will do." So, oh, interesting loyalty. Yeah. So, would you choose national loyalty over personal moral beliefs? Oh hell no. Um, now, some yeah. people would say that's unpatriotic. Uh, yes, but, uh, I, I quite literally am a little bit of a Confederate, Virginia first. Oh, I'm not going to talk about in this, but, you know, in anything, but anyhow, you know, it's, it's a, if, 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 if I truly believed in Virginia's cause, it would be Virginia first. Right. Yeah. Or, or a personal cause or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Now you were, yeah. I think the name flip or the position flip happened after World War II for the most part. Well, well, I kind of there was some gradual change yes. from World War II. Uh, Roosevelt used Eleanor Roosevelt to stir shit up. He didn't do it himself, but he used her to stir shit up during World War II. Um, <clears throat> and it came really after. After the Eisenhower years, kind of, sort of, maybe. Um, it wasn't overnight, that's for sure. It, it, it wasn't overnight. It, it was, it was a slow steps, thing. Yeah. Uh, that's why we didn't notice it till suddenly in the you know 90s. We're like, hey, wait a minute. Uh, it, well, the, the, the Democratic Party, because as the result of the American Civil War, was always known as the poor man's party. Always. Uh the notion today that is the party for the black people, and I'm not so 100% sure that I agree with. But uh, uh, I got you. That's another. That's another show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what were you saying now? Uh, let's see. We were talking about northern abolitionists. Uh, Lincoln's view, Southern view on slavery. Uh, Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation as a political ploy. Uh, He was basically asserting his authority over the South in an attempt to try to keep France and England out of the war. Uh, The France had been, uh, the South had been courting France and England to join the war ever since the beginning in their favor. And as we mentioned earlier, the terrorists affect them as well. So absolutely, they were given some thought to it. They had a problem with supporting a country that was that had slave race, but they were uh, given some thought to it. Uh, and despite Jefferson Davis, Jefferson Davis was the president of the South Confederacy. Uh, 
despite his misgivings of pushing the issue of slavery, an offer was made to both France and England to abolish slavery within five years of, of the end of hostilities if either of them would join the war on behalf of the South. Uh, France said, hmm, we'll think about that, but we're not really sure you can win this damn war. Mm. And he said, that's why we're talking to <laughs> you, genius. <laughs> and the reason why they said that, basically, because until that point, um, the South had only fought a defensive war. They hadn't mm. made any attempt whatsoever to invade the North. Well, they weren't trying. Uh, that, that wasn't their goal. Their goal was to that, separate, not Right. It conquer. was never Lee's goal. We're going to defend our homeland. Okay? That 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 was Lee's goal. Uh so, September 17, 1862, Lee goes into Maryland. Maryland was a border state. Uh, a border state was a state that had slavery, but it did not succeed with the South when the war began. Uh, but Lee moves his army into Maryland in an effort to try to gain some support out of Maryland's and to show, hey, we can take the war to the North. Mm-hmm. Uh, Following the battle, the battle of Antietam on September 17th, 1862, <clears throat> which technically was fought to a draw. Okay. Uh, the North gets gets the credit for the win, but it was technically fought to a draw. Uh, Is there any other significance uh, to that battle that should be mentioned? Well, it, it kind of showed that the South could take the war to the North. Okay. And uh, Lincoln says, uh, holy shit, I got to do something. So uh, he issues an order, a warning order to southern states that he's going to confiscate their property, i.e. slaves, in the form of emancipation on September 22nd. He issued this order if uh, they don't rejoin the Union. That was his way of basically telling France and England, stay out of it. I got this slavery shit. I'm going to take care of it. So... (laughs) It, and then in January 63. Do you know if and when? I know <clears throat> England abolished slavery at a certain point. Do you know when that 1780 was? 1780 something, 1790 something. And what about France? I do not know about Did France. They, I assume they had slavery there at some point. Probably they're all wankers. <laughs> Join the rest of us. Okay, go on ahead. Sorry. Uh. Sorry, I was re- reading Twitch. Um, uh, uh, January, January 1863, he issues the formal Emancipation Proclamation. The Emancipation Proclamation, I believe somebody mentioned that earlier, did not free all slaves. 1794 for France, by the way. Okay. Okay, come on. Uh, the Emancipation Proclamation only freed the slaves. Uh, in the territories that were in conflict against the Union, those states that were in conflict against the Union, which meant that the border states could still have slavery. Any northern state that still had slavery could still have slavery. Uh, any of the properties that was under uh, Union control, Tennessee, Northern Virginia, they could still have slavery. So basically it was Lincoln just trying to prove he's the boss and he's taking care of everything. Uh <clears throat> and we got three minutes. We'll be going into the intro for the third hour. And we're going to intro for the third hour. Unless you so, want to do it now while you're paused. Let's do it now because I don't want to get into this. And mm. okay. this can be lengthy. Okay. So let's go ahead and roll into this. We'll do the intro for that and give you guys one song from The Dark Design with Haggard Rider. Be right back. Okay. And I'm going to go use the facilities. I'll be right back. Would you... You know what? Anybody who's new and listening, don't forget, you can follow the channel Mm. on Twitch just by clicking follow, which is somewhere on the screen. I don't know where. Be back. Uh, Football player, I'm going to say that you're commenting on our discussion about... uh, Loyalties to the state versus the government. Uh. <laughs> Patriotism now closer is presented as a nice way to say nationalism. Yeah. 
I don't think you and I agree on that, but uh, there are those that will tell us that. I'm kind of looking forward to next week's show because normally my habit has been to keep an eye on all the shit that's going on on Facebook. So since we started <laughs> using Twitch, I've left it to everybody else to kind of do that. So I'm aware I'm on Twitch, wave hello every now and then and stuff. But next week where they're talking about setting up and using Twitch, he's going to use my profile as the sort of sample one he was saying, yeah. Mm. Which would be cool because I've got Twitch I've and I've got it before simply for the technical side of it when we were first starting it and he wanted people to go and watch it and make sure streams were coming through and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And So I got it for that, but I've never really used it. Um, so that'd be quite interesting because uh, now it's kind of got to the point where I'm sat here and I'm watching Facebook and it's almost like we're getting more interaction from those of you who are out there on Twitch. So look out. After yeah, next week's show, nobody I might talk well be to in us there. on Facebook no more. <laughs> yeah, you ran away. Except for Gray. Gray talks to us on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, Gray's going to bed. I am going to have to bail on you guys in a minute. Okay. No, yeah, just to give you the heads up, I don't know if you want to announce that or whether I should just slip quietly away at some point or how you want to play oh, it. Oh, we can announce yeah, it. Yeah, I need to. Yeah. I need to go and get a few hours sleep before my Understand. horrendous caveman-style kitchen appearance tomorrow. How many hours sleep will you be able to get? Uh, if I go to bed now in a minute, about about just a yeah, around three. Yeah, well, we got a minute. Be gone, bro. Minute forty-five till mm. it comes back. But if you want to go right now, you can. If you want to finish that cigarette, you can. No, it's fine. I'll finish the cigarette off air. I'll go now then, and le and you can just explain to everyone that I hate you all, and I was bored senseless, so I fucked off. Yeah, we'll say that you were upset for us <laughs> picking on the friend. No, actually, I, I, Ed, for what it's worth, I found tonight really interesting, even though I haven't said a lot, but that's because I've that's enjoyed right, listening to it. Yeah. And I'm saying a little extra so you have some interaction. It is my proclivity to Thank just stay here. <laughs> oh, I know how it is. Remember when I'm like... I love this topic, and you guys just shut up and listen to me. I'm like, fuck! Yeah. God damn it, can you say something? Someone bail me out of here, yeah? Give me, give me time for a prayer. Yeah, my anyway, okay. concern is actually... Be jumping before we go live anymore. again, I'm oh. going to say goodnight, then, guys. Get out. Good night, buddy. All right. Well. Good luck with Take your Take it easy, guys, all right? Yep. And have a good third hour. Will do. Thanks, bro. Hey, catch you later, guys. Take it easy. All good right. Night. And as you guessed, Giantria is not joining us at all tonight. Yeah. But apparently she wants to talk later, so we'll see how that is. It, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. You're okay, man. <laughs> Yeah, okay, and we're coming back in like eight seconds here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, did you get messages? No. Oh. Uh -uh. Okay. Uh, and we're we're back. Um, football plays wants to know if you're okay. And everybody who's listening on Radio Real and White Party, Kevin had to go because he's only getting about three hours sleep before a full day's work. So he stuck it out pretty well. What a trooper. Yeah, football player, I'm okay. I just had some comments to make, and, and I realized that we were on Twitch, so I probably shouldn't make those comments. <laughs> oh, I'm curious. They were, they, they were of a rather personal nature. <laughs> we'll talk about it after. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> we'll get to that. It's not that whole hemorrhoids thing, is it? <laughs> oh, by the way, Gray is leaving also. Thanks for the interesting topic tonight, y'all. Mm. I've been fading over the last quarter hour. Going to take my leave. I wish each and every of you all the very best. Don't forget, Gray, you are welcome to listen or watch the video afterwards. And listen Absolutely. for next week's show, Gray. Let us educate you about Twitch because considering everything you do and your lack of knowledge on it, it can only help. So join us next week. You have a great night, bud. Okay, now you had a new thing to go into. Uh, the 13th Amendment. <clears throat> okay, so we originally had four, <laughs> ten. 
<laughs> like the commandments. Now we had twelve, I believe, right? Am I correct? Uh, ten. Ten was the original. Okay. Wow, I feel uh, ignorant. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the Thirteenth Amendment, which was brought up during this Civil War, uh, Lincoln did not originally put his support behind it. Uh. <laughs> Lincoln only began to support the 13th Amendment in the closing months of the war. He could tell the war was coming to an end. He had now issued his Emancipation Proclamation, which he feared could be challenged. Okay. Once hostilities ended, because it only freed the slaves in the territories that were hostile against the U.S. government. So he was looking at the war ending and keeping slavery. Abolitionists would have been pissed off at him. He wouldn't have won a third term. France and England would have been saying, hey, motherfucker, you kept us out of the war because you freed all the goddamn slaves and it was just a goddamn ploy. So, hey, you southern states, you want to rise up again? You got our support next time because uh. this fucker's a liar. <laughs> so now Lincoln has to push for the 13th Amendment. <clears throat> And that was pretty much his... I, I just watched the movie... In preparation for this, I watched the movie uh, Lincoln. Uh-huh. I haven't seen uh, it. Well, I, I sit there the whole time just shaking my head going... Uh, PR. That's a lie. That's a fucking lie. That's a fucking lie. <laughs> <laughs> ah, gotcha. Thank you there, football player. I'll do that. Give me a second. Let me move myself over to a corner here now that... It's a big black man. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. And then Lincoln you lean, known, then you lean right over behind for the box. Saying, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, was, I was reading. I don't <laughs> have my reading glasses Here. on. Uh, Lincoln was known for saying one thing and doing the opposite. This is so true. That's what uh, it said. Um I, I don't want this to be a Lincoln bashing night. Uh, uh, there is a book uh, written by a black historian of all, uh, Lerone, Lerone Bennett Jr. Uh, the title of the book is Forced in the Glory, which uh, discusses Lincoln and many of the issues that I've been uh, discussing tonight. So, uh, <laughs> A lot of people forget that our country is not run by the president he, he is the tip of the iceberg and that the laws and whatnot are made up by a ruling body mm -hmm. he's just the head so yeah, uh, he gets sorry taking a, taking a pause while i read my notes okay. he gets credit <laughs> while everybody else you know it was uh, congress and senate and many many people who were involved in this he just gets the credit um because it's easier to remember one guy's name than a bunch. Plus, he was killed. So, you know, bonus. That sounded wrong. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> so, and and this is the last part of the topic for the evening. Oh, okay. uh, did blacks fight for the Confederacy? Simple answer is yes. On both sides. Uh, uh, yeah, but they fought from they fought for the Confederacy. Since the beginning of the war, exact numbers are unknown. And not as slaves. Heard, uh, not some as slaves, but many as free okay, men. Okay, so some as slaves. Uh, now, did were some offered freedom to fight? Uh, some were given their freedom before fighting. Okay. But uh, were they freed because they were entering service? Not necessarily, okay. no. Um, as mentioned earlier, Stonewall Jackson insisted slave or free. Right. Those under his command received a wage. <clears throat> An equal wage. That's important. An equal wage. Yeah. Not $3 less like the black soldiers in the North, but an equal wage. Interesting. Mm. Uh, now, let me ask you, in the modern military, is all the pay same between the sexes, races, etc. in our modern military? Uh, with the exception of what is considered a special duty assignment, yes, the pay okay. is the same. But for a special duty assignment, if you're a man or a woman in a special duty assignment, you both receive the same pay. So the so, pay is still the same. I mean, position yeah. determines pay. Your 
G thirteen or D G nine. It, it's it it's time and grade. It's it's yeah. time and grade. You're served and and uh, you're ranked. So men don't uh, get raises quicker than women. No. Or, no. Okay. And and that's not necessarily the topic tonight, but I was just curious oh, in no. general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, gosh, I was getting ready to say something about Lincoln. I totally forgot what the fuck it was. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, did blacks fight for the Confederacy? Yes. Uh, Northern newspapers reported seeing black. Well, for what it's worth, I mean, it is a newspaper. <laughs> but Northern newspapers reported seeing blacks in uniform carrying arms. Uh, and not just a bundle to drop for the soldiers. <laughs> uh, Union scouts, Union generals sent many a report back. Saying that they had seen blacks in uniform carrying arms. Uh, uh, Southern colored troops fought in segregated and integrated units. Unlike in the North, all units were segregated in the North with the exception of the leadership. Uh, what, what do you mean uh, by that? Uh, all leadership was white? or all, In the North, all leadership was white. Okay. Uh, do you know what the, the highest South- ranking black soldier was during the american civil war yes i believe sergeant major okay uh uh football player oh hold on. Uh, there he is okay in, in the 54th massachusetts uh okay uh and if you're running low i got another topic that relates that we could go into. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, equal pay. I'm uh, just trying to figure out where the hell I was here. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Then I'll get you revved up and all hot and bothered to make you rant a bit. Uh, as we touched on further, yeah, you can get me hot and bothered. Uh, as, as we touched on earlier, uh, some were slaves. Many more were freemen. Uh, if a slave owner went off to war, he took his, body servant with him. Okay, you know, he can't get dressed by himself. He's got to have his body servant with him. Um, Presumably another black man. uh, A black man, yeah. Uh, uh, He may have taken one or two other slaves from his plantation with him, depending on how many he had. But he wasn't going to take a lot of his slaves with him to fight a war, because they had to be home raising the crops, feeding everybody that's fighting a war. Uh... Black people in the South raised money for the Southern war effort. They viewed it as a foreign invader coming to invade their lands, uh, just like whites did. They, they had to look out for their businesses. Right. Uh, a lot of people uh, say there's a little bit of a Helsinki syndrome going on. That's why black people may have fought for the Confederacy, but... Uh, and, and they like to use the Louisiana Guard, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, what about that? Uh, I'm not familiar with there, there were black businessmen in New Orleans that basically put up all the funding for uniforms and equipment to form an entire black unit okay. in uh, Louisiana. They were known as Louisiana Guards. <clears throat> when the Union Army invaded Louisiana and they took control of Louisiana, the Louisiana Guards switched sides. And they're like, see... They really didn't want to fight for the South. It's like they were fucking businessmen, okay? They were looking out for their business, okay? okay? You know what? How many white people switch sides in it, the middle it, of the it battle? It happened all throughout medieval history, okay? Yeah. A lord has lands in this country and that country. Let's see, which one do I think can win? That's let's, the side I'm going to fight Let's talk about Benedict on. Arnold for a half a second. You know, this, right. this is not something that... And, and by the way, in some cases, that might have been the case. But it's each individual. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 where we are. Okay. Um, so now I can close this out unless you have something to go along with it. Let's talk about modern Confederate pride. Okay. Uh, what, what? You need to. How you want to get me going? <laughs> <laughs> so nowadays, I mean, just in August, we had the thing here in Virginia where you know people who would raise a confederate flag for their cause it was definitely racially motivated in those cases um Mm -hmm. we mentioned him tonight and he's heading to florida for another get together um so you have confederate pride Mm -hmm. 
you'll raise a Confederate flag. But can you get a big pickup truck that's jacked up and put a Confederate flag on the back? Can you do that? No, because I don't want to spend that much fucking money in gas. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Um, so with all that going on, what's – and I know there's no easy answer. There's no right answer to this either. But what's some answers for how can we still maintain – like some people say, people raising the Confederate flag now would be like somebody else raising the British flag going, I remember my heritage. And people would be like, you hate America. Well, interesting point, because I did see that on a talk show. Okay. That very thing that you just said. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there was a guy on this talk show that was really into French and Indian War history. Okay. Uh, his family was complaining because he was so into French and Indian War history, and he had gone on this talk show. And there was film footage of him in his little building that he built out back where he hung out with his friends that dressed up in 18th century costume, and they had their British flag flying. And you would be amazed by the ignorance of the audience. Why are you flying that flag of the enemy? You're in America! And they lost the war. Well, number one, it's the French and Indian War. Um, they didn't exactly lose that. <laughs> you want to give a little more information on that? Uh, the French and Indian War was fought between basically England and France uh, in the early 18th century, 1860. Gotcha. That time period. So while we were still a part of Kevin's people. <laughs> so it's 17, 1760. Excuse me, 1760, sorry. So 18th yeah. century, you had correct. Yeah. And didn't that predominantly take place in what would now be the northern United States or southern Canada? Predominantly, yeah. Okay. Predominantly Virginia up. There were some skirmishes in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia. But predominantly uh, Virginia up. Most of it in New York itself okay. uh, in Canada. But uh Started started by George Washington and what would eventually lead to the American Revolution because England was taxing the American colonies to pay right. for that war. So okay, so what what happened with this guy on the TV show and or was that all you had? I you know I after seeing the ignorance of people not really knowing what the English flag was, I turned the shit off. <laughs> <laughs> so nowadays we have some people. And I know, again, you're, you're very proud of this. Here's the thing. Uh-huh. It's when, when I see a KKK group, mm-hmm. if that's, if you want to say that, flying the Confederate battle flag, I'm as much offended at their use of that flag as anything. Okay. That's kind of um, the point I was heading at. Yeah. Uh, what a lot of people, well, we don't care about the American flag these days, but People get so fixated on on that Confederate flag. If you ever watch the KKK march, they're also flying an American flag. They're also carrying crosses. They're also carrying various Christian flag symbols yeah. while they march. So should we ban all of that? Could help with the peace if we did. <laughs> <laughs> Can we ban ignorance instead? <laughs> we could just get large wooden spoons and there'd be a lot of head thunking going on. It's, uh... But, you know, how do we... Why, why do you... Why would you wear a Confederate flag? What's your backing behind that? I'm born and bred Virginia. Through and through. Okay. So how's that flag relate to that? Why, why fly it? Virginia's always led the way. They did. Uh, granted, South Carolina was the first state to succeed, but Virginia's always led the way. I admire their courage. I mm-hmm. admire their courage to stand up and say, "Look, you're doing the same thing to us that Britain did to us less than a hundred years ago. We ain't gonna take that shit." I admire their courage. Am I glad the country stayed together? Absolutely. But I admire their courage. See, I myself, and I was discussing this earlier with Jen, um, there are times where people need to realize, as much as I I am all for personal freedom, though I, I don't consider myself patriotic, no offense, but because I do believe in, in 
nationalism versus patriotism. I know what they both are. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people confuse nationalism for patriotic behavior. Um, but I said, you know, there are times you have to put society before the individual. Mm-hmm. And for a country to run, you do have to put it before certain things. But of course, we're, we're made of individuals. It, it's a... My original thought was it's a shame we can't carry the Confederate flag for what it was raised for initially, Mm -hmm. which is to say we want to break away from the U.S., which that's part of this conversation also is I do believe states should be able to cede from the U.S. Um, Mm -hmm. And and to say you can't is kind of like, oh, jerk. You know, it's I get why you want to keep it together. Um. Yeah, and, and football play says, what about putting the better of people before the nation? Yes, absolutely, because that is the society as opposed to the nation. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's – that's it, it. it's a very gray area, and there's no really good, strong one answer or solution. And if there was, you know, they'd put a PR spin on it and turn it backwards on us anyway. Um, a, a little history point. Go ahead. Um, you know, we always say we we see that flag with the St. Andrews Cross and the stars, and we always say the Confederate flag. But that that really wasn't the flag of the Confederacy. Mm-hmm. Go on. Um, uh, there were several flags of the Confederacy. The original one. Well, I could be wrong. I'm not going to say this was the original one because flags change, just like the flag of the United States on did, a daily basis. <laughs> on a daily basis, okay. And 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 football player will definitely correct me on this if if I'm wrong on this. But uh, uh, during the first battle of Manassas in July of 1861, uh, there was a flag of the Confederacy with the stars in a little circle on a blue field, and a red stripe, white stripe, red stripe, and they went off the war. There's a flag of the United States with stars on a blue field and these red and white stripes. The problem was, back in those days, when you're on the battlefield, you look for your flag to find out where the fuck your people were. Mm-hmm. From a distance, guess what? <laughs> uh, and hold that thought. I'm going to go to another song. We can keep talking during the song. but uh, Okay. Here's a oh, – who do we got? Frisky Frolics, and I have to pull the title off my page because it didn't transfer it over. Ah, Deep Ellum Blues, great song. So you guys on the stations enjoy this. We'll be right back in a couple minutes. Let me do that. Okay. So, by the way, Football Plays says nobody remembers yeah. those flags. They just remember the battle flag of the Virginia the Regulars. Flag. And, and is, that, uh, what, is that what we call the Confederate flag now? It, it, it is the battle flag. It, it became the flag that was used by the troops so they could quickly look up and say, oh, fuck, that's where our people were. But it was not the flag of the Confederacy. <clears throat> Any idea what the official flag of the Confederacy was? Uh, the first one, I believe, was the one that I just described, the stars on the blue field. With the red stripe and the How white stripe. at the end of the stripe. war? At, uh, it, was, it was a small pattern of the battle flag up in a corner on a white field was what it became. With the red stripe? With the blue and the red stripe? It was a r- single red stripe across the top. Okay. So it didn't, it didn't look like they were surrendering. Just checking the banner on the Facebook event page. There's the, uh, the Confederate flag in the corner field, and then it has a blue stripe. A white stripe and a red stripe. It's, you could barely see the blue. Ah, yes. That that would have been it. That would have been it right there. Okay. Yeah, that's why I was asking. I was staring at that going, I wonder if she got an accurate picture of that. That's cool. Good job, Andrea. It's, uh, yeah, and then uh, if you look at the full banner it, and, and pull up the picture, you'll see part of it got cut off. It says, Black Confederates in the War for Southern Independence. And then right before, being informed is more important than being opinionated. Learn the truth about the Confederate history and heritage. Oh, that photo there is of the Louisiana Guard. There we go. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it's it's a highly disputed photo because you can't see on that photo, but on each end mm. is a actual Union officer on each end, but the men in the middle are dressed in gray. That's because that was Louisiana Guard. 
they switch sides. Was it after they switched sides then? That's why there's a Union soldier? That's when, yeah, that's when that photo was taken. Von Hegner says the final flag was the stained banner. I'm not familiar with that is. It was a white background <laughs> with a red, red stain on it. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was just, you know, a surrender flag. You know, a French flag. <laughs> and Matricular, thanks for jumping in. Um, looking forward to having you next week. And at some point in time, I'd love to be able to talk to you and RW Mech before that so I can make sure we all line up well. Um, uh, Von Hegner says, Red Vertical Stripe and Football Play says, Ed, what about the changes to the military after the Civil War? Mostly states supplied units versus the unified government. Well, even before the Civil War, that's, I, I, I debated on whether to get into that in constitutional history and the importance of the Second Amendment and so forth and so on. I think that's for a later show. Okay. Uh, hold on, let me check this one quick message. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. Oh. Oh, little neck pain today. <laughs> been a long day, but Mondays always are for me. I get mm -hmm. up at 5.30 in the morning, and then I get home around 1, give or take a half hour, depending on how things went. <laughs> so let's see. What do we got over here? Hold on. Ian says, here we go, guys. Oh, yeah, it's a whole little chart of them there. Oh, and you answered Chuck. Okay, good. Let me pull that picture up. Ah, yes, there's the one you referred to with the two red stripes and the one white. Where is Ian's post? Let's see, where am I? Top, if you refresh, it does not have the one in the picture, so I don't know what that is. Or ah, if three. possibly Ian's isn't complete. Yeah, um... And, well, the first one there, which was the original, that's what I thought. I was sure about that. Uh, and we're coming back. Hell, I fly that off my deck right now. Okay. Yeah, most people wouldn't know what that is. Most people don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah. I didn't see it when I was over there. I'll have to look for it next time. So, let's see here. Okay. Trans-Mississippi Department Cherokee Nation. Flag top, the Choctaw Brigade. Interesting. Yep. There was a Cherokee chief that was a Confederate general. Interesting. Thank you, Ian, for posting that. Okay, where are we at? We're at half past. Matriculus joined us. I was trying to get Ed riled up about modern. Ha uh -huh. <laughs> Didn't work. Well, it's, it's because we're both reasonable people, and we went, yeah, let's, uh, hey, thanks for hosting, Matricula, appreciate that. Football play says, that's because the weekends by the house don't know what it is. If you flew the battle flag, they might complain. Yeah. So, hey, we got the dancing shark. Sorry, it's when Matricula hosted, we, we get... A little burst and uh, uh dancing shark yeah he appears over the talk of the tavern um, <laughs> thing in the box there <clears throat> so i just set that up last week von hegner says the last major confederate officer to surrender was the cherokee general stand wait yep so where'd he surrender at i don't remember <laughs> but i just read the article this morning Von Hegner will tell us. Yeah. It's, uh... Oh. So should we go to other stuff, or we got more on this topic? Well, I, I'll close it out real quick. Go ahead. Probably five minutes or so closing yeah. it out. <laughs> <laughs> in closing it out, <clears throat> I'd like to make a, a statement about history in general, because, as I said in the beginning of the show, uh... We, t we tend today to just dwell on bad, bad, bad when it comes to history. Mm -hmm. uh, history is ugly. His history is like having sex. It's ugly. It's noisy. There's strange smells, strange fluids. 
uh, everything else. That, that, that's what history is. So it, it's not always a good thing. As I touched on last week with Christopher Columbus, you know, Christopher Columbus hadn't come to America. I wouldn't be sitting here today talking to you. If there hadn't been a slave trade, as horrible as it was, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. Through my veins flows Scots, Irish, English, Native American, and Western African. So if none of that had happened, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. So as bad and ugly as it all is, I really have to be kind of thankful it happened because, you know, Christopher Columbus came to America. There was a slave trade. We got Ray Charles. We got Duke Ellington. We got Dr. <laughs> Charles Drew. The list can go on and on and on and on and on. If none of that had happened... We wouldn't have had none of those people. I'm not as famous as Dr. Charles Drew and Duke Ellington and yet. Charles, but, you know, so you just have to accept history for what it was and say what it is acceptable to us today. What was acceptable to them back then just isn't acceptable to us today. But, hey, maybe some good did come out of it somewhere. Don't repeat it. Right. But, hey, maybe some good didn't come out of it somewhere. And I'd like to give a little analogy on the Confederate flag tearing down the statue thing, okay? Because while I haven't had this exact sim situation, I have had similar situations. Let's say I live next door to Billy Bob. Billy Bob flies the Confederate flag off his porch. And I think, hmm, look at my skin and wonder what exactly does that mean? Mm -hmm. I run into Billy Bob every now and then at the mailbox. I can kind of tell, hmm. Billy Bob don't think much of me. But one day I'm coming home. I got the kayaks on top of my car. Billy Bob says, dude, you fish? I was like, no, nah, I don't fish. I just like to float down the river and drink beer. Really? I'd like to do that sometime. So Billy Bob and I go down the river next weekend and we drink some beer. Billy Bob and I are making progress getting to know one another. And Billy Bob's telling his wife, you know, that Ed guy, he's not a bad boy. I don't want him to marry my daughter, but he's not a bad boy. While Billy Bob and I are floating on the river drinking beer, and I'm drinking Budweiser because I'm really trying to blend in, <laughs> he finds out that I like NASCAR. So Billy Bob says, next weekend, you come out and hang out with me and the boys, and we watch a race. So next weekend, I go hang out with Billy Bob, I, the takeover bottle of Jack Daniels. I drank Budweiser with him again. But hey, the bo boys are excited because I bought Jack Daniels, and there's like, dude, and yes, I'm the only fly in a jar of buttermilk. And they talk to Billy Bob and say, you know, I had to wonder about you when you invited that boy over here. But, you know, he's not a bad boy. Billy Bob's like, you're right. He's not a bad boy, but I still don't want him to marry my daughter. But Billy Bob and I are actually making progress, getting to know one another. Then all of a sudden, Billy Bob gets a message one day from the Homeowners Association saying somebody might be offended. So you need to take down your Confederate battle flag. Billy Bob's like. I wonder if that was that nigger Ed next door. Hopefully he would come ask me and I would say, no, I don't give a rat's ass. It's how we treat one another. But man, being the creature that he is, he's probably just going to think that's that nigger next door. Billy Bob once again starts getting a little cold at me. Two weeks after that, Billy Bob gets a message from the cemetery where his great granddaddy is buried at, where he has a little Confederate flag that he changes quite often on his great granddaddy's grave telling him he's got to remove that flag because there's black people buried in that cemetery and their relatives might be a little upset about that. Guess what? Billy Bob now doesn't have any use for us no more. The same ignorance that kept Billy Bob from really getting to know me is now being used against him because of his things that he believes in. So anything that Billy Bob had made, Billy Bob and I had made in the way of progress that riff is now bigger than ever, and Billy Bob's now sitting over in his house looking up how to join the fucking KKK. True story? Could be. Could be. <clears throat> I think the bottom line to remember, history is written by the victors. And more importantly, history is a footnote. Mm -hmm. No matter how detailed you go into history... You do not get the real story, the story of the person who was there. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen. And that's any history, anytime, anywhere. 
Most people do not look to offend or hurt other people. It happens, but it's not something most people want. It's the vocal minority that does that shit. So communication, getting to know one another, discussing differences and similarities, these are the things that will move us forward. Move us forward. Not shutting down somebody's ideology. Can you change somebody's mind? Probably not. But you can make them open to other things they hadn't considered at all. And then maybe, and I've seen this happen, maybe Billy Bob never wants his daughter to marry that black guy. But she does. And he loves that damn mixed grandchild more than he loved anything ever in his life. And he walks around, though he may have had certain views in the past, he's now just this far on the other side of the line to protect Mm -hmm. that baby that he loves. So... Remember, racism is is a double-edged sword. And sometimes people who fight too hard for a cause are actually damaging the cause. And by the way, good night to Von Hagner and his lovely lady. And uh, Victoria is leaving us also. No, I don't think she's leaving. She says going to pass this on. I think she's going to share it. Ah, okay. So I think she's still with us. Well, thank you, darling. Appreciate that. Yes, appreciate that. It's... uh, this is one of those topics where we never know how it's going to go. I got to tell you, I was scared to death. Yeah, I don't blame you. It's when posting it, I wanted to post it because it means a lot to me. Um, not necessarily the historic topic, just equality and not being ignorant in any form if you can avoid it. Besides, you know, I just haven't learned about that yet. Mm-hmm. So I'm always cautious, but it's very important. It's – oh, wow. Thank you very much. I think you might have just taken the lead on uh, <laughs> the bits there, football. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and football, I hope you'll uh, join us again. Oh, let's see. Oh, hold on. I lost. There we go. Okay, I'm back. Look at all the little heads. You know, I deleted all those heads. Why are those guys' heads in there? Uh, they like head. I get <laughs> I guess. Anyhow, Um Hype. I, I don't know what that means. Does that mean the face explosion, Matricula? But yeah, anyhow, the point is, pull your own head out of your ass. Talk to people. There is a great Heineken commercial. Look it up on YouTube. And it's got four different groups of people. By groups, I mean two, two, two. And one is <clears throat> one political view, and another one's another. One's gay, one's straight. And they, they have opposing points of view. And they put them together to build this Ikea piece of furniture. And they spend an hour working together, putting this together, whatever. And then the host comes out and goes, <clears throat> you have this view that they disagree with, and they have this view that you disagree with. Here's two Heinekens. Do you want to sit down and talk and share a beer? Or do you want to leave? (laughs) Now, in the commercial, of course, every person sat down and discussed it because they know the person now. And that's the point, is getting to know somebody. Doesn't mean you have to agree. But it means understand. Right. Yeah. Don't be a dick. Be a little bit of commandment. Uh, Victoria posted, she posted a meme uh, on Facebook. The media tells you how to act, what to wear, who to like, what to eat, and how you, how you should live. No wonder society is fake. It's time to switch off your TV and switch off your mind. Uh, Chuck also posted, just because someone doesn't believe the same things that you do doesn't make them stupid or evil. And yeah, no truer words have ever been spoken, my friend. Yeah, it's uh, something else to keep in mind about the media. They make money by selling news. Absolutely. Me going to a church and reporting on down-home days where the church is celebrating their 150th anniversary, that's not exciting news that makes somebody pick up a paper. It makes those 50 people that were there buy a paper. But you mention a race riot because the antique store has Aunt Jemima bottles from the 50s in it, that's now selling news. Mm. This is how the media makes her money. To follow the media's lead 
and base your opinion off what you learn in the news. By the way, I'm not saying don't listen to the news. Educate yourself how you can, but please, I don't know, have your own damn thought. Ratings are money, says football place. That's yes, idea. ratings are money. You know. It, and Ian, it would not be rude at all, but they probably check to make sure everybody going on the commercial likes Heine. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'd be like, do, do you have something else? <laughs> I'll talk, but, you know, can we get maybe a steak? Yeah, it, it's always the money. Um, people want to say the root of all evil, but it, it's a necessary evil in our current society. It's the way the world works currently. Can it change? Sure. Can it change tomorrow? <laughs> no. Oh, by the way. Here's a quick song, Gracie Curran and the High Flute and Band with Even the Rain, and we'll be right back. And of course, you folks in Twitter, you're still here, you're still with us. Uh, have we done enough hand-holding and kumbaya? Shall we talk about other bullshit, or shall we go on with the don't be an ass and think for yourself? We can talk about whatever you want. Really? I'm good. Let me go find some stupid-ass article that I got saved. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, what's this? It says, Ridiculous Tour Riders. Oh! Okay, this could take up the last 20 minutes. <laughs> the 20 most ridiculous things superstar musicians have demanded at their concerts. Now, let me go post the link here for everyone. Now, you ain't got to worry about it, Ed. You did all the other work tonight, right? <laughs> I'll put it over here in Twitch also. Um, by the way, Steampunk Countess, it's true. Having worked in both radio and TV, it never ceased to shock me how much money talks. <clears throat> it's a shame. I understand where business comes from on that aspect, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm hot to support it. Um, that's just... But anyhow. Um, right, this article. So, now we all know about Van Halen demanding the brown M&Ms be removed. Have you heard of this, Ed? The brown M&Ms? Van Halen once had their list of, here's what you we want backstage, and they said they want a bowl of M&M's, but they want all the brown ones removed. So, uh, okay. now the reason they did this is they wanted to make sure the damn place was reading their actual list of wants and needs, as opposed to being just, I don't like brown M&M's. Um, but there have been plenty of other people that have requested odd things. Like okay. Beyonce demands her dressing room be kept at 78 degrees, asks for chicken legs, heavily seasoned, cayenne pepper. They don't put a comma here. They should. But it says cayenne pepper and rose scented candles. I'm sure she did not want her chicken scented with, with rose scented candles. Don't have Excuse coke. Me. Uh huh. Oh, you're belching. I'm sorry. Carry on. We didn't hear it. <laughs> um, don't have Coca Cola products. She can only be seen with Pepsi due to contractual agreements. But her list of demands are one large table for catering dressed with white tablecloths, room at 78 degrees, four brand new white towels in the bathroom, two face and two body. For the hot food, this sounds good, I'm hungry. Juicy chicken leg, uh, juicy baked chicken, legs, wings, and breast only. Please season with fresh garlic, seasoned salt, black pepper, and cayenne pepper, heavily seasoned. Steamed garlic broccoli. I could eat lunch with this girl. Lightly seasoned green beans, lightly seasoned steamed spinach. One case of Aquafina water, half cold, half room temperature. One hot tea setup. Please have a new coffee pot. Sliced lemon wedges, rose scented candles, lighters for candles, and CD player. Unreasonable? Yes. <laughs> it's a bit excessive. But nothing too crazy. Some of the other ones. And welcome back for everybody on the stations. We're uh, discussing things entertainers have asked for backstage when performing. So Adele. Um, Twelve small bottles still. Uh, Non-carbonated spring water at room temperature. Electric kettle for boiling. Mugs for teas. Washed and dried. Metal teaspoons. Two squeezy bottles of clear honey. Not organic. Um, bottle of very best quality red wine, Italian, French, or Spanish. Assortment of chewing gum. One pack of Marlboro Lights plus one disposable cigarette lighter. Small selection of fresh fruit. 
bananas, apples, grapes, fresh berries, no citrus, and one small plate of assorted freshly made, individually wrapped sandwiches to include chicken salad, no tomatoes, vinegar, chili, or citrus fruit. Let's see, I'll just read names and you tell me who you want to hear about. Kanye, you want to hear his? Not particularly. Not particularly. He does have Hennessy in there, by the way. And, and Patron, and Sky or Absolute Vodka, and Hot Sauce. Just so you know. And Hot Sauce. <laughs> Not more than that, but, oh, and Heineken. Sorry, Ian. Kanye's drinking Heineken. He likes Heine. Let's of course see. he likes Heine. Look who he's married to. Uh, let's see, Rihanna. Oh, I've got to read Rihanna. Uh, just because of some of the stuff she asked for. Because you thought the other one was excessive. Five AC power outlets. Okay. Adequate lighting for a relaxed atmosphere. How many fucking vibrators does she have? Well, apparently five. Wait, no, four. <laughs> one for the phone. White drapes to cover lockers and or bricks. A humidifier. Here's the part that I love. One large throw rug. Plush or animal print. Cheeto or leopard. Must be clean as she will walk on it barefoot. Pipe and drape the room in dark blue or black drapes with icy blue chiffon draped nicely on top. Six candles. Archipelago Black Forest. If you can't get these, please let me know ASAP, and we'll have a second choice of candle for Ree. Four small, clear, square vases with white tulips, no foliage. Second choice, white Casablanca lilies, no foliage. Third choice, white Frisia, no foliage. See, and I thought I was asking for a lot when I wanted clean sheets when I checked into the Super 8. Uh-huh. Yeah, please, no dead bodies and clean sheets. <laughs> you can only get one of the two. You can't get both. <laughs> Katy Perry. Um, this one is a little more reasonable, but it's a long list. Sir Paul McCartney? No? Go ahead. Okay. Okay, this is, okay. <laughs> All lamps must be halogen floor lamps with dimmer switch. Only animal-free materials, cottons, denim, denims, velour, etc. Do not provide furniture made of any animal skin or print. Do not provide artificial versions of animal skin or print either. No leather <laughs> seating is allowed in the black stretch limousine either. Is he afraid he's going to be eaten by animals or something? <laughs> I assume he supports, you know, animal, yeah, no animal crew. Yeah. Arrangement. And more, anim more animals die making synthetic products than probably. Uh, Could be. Arrange yeah. for a dry cleaner before arrival. Six full and leafy floor plants, but no trees. We want plants that are just as full on the bottom as the top, such as palm, bamboo, peace lilies, etc. No tree trunks. Now, wouldn't palm, bamboo, etc. be have any fifty dollars no. one large arrangement of white casablanca li lilies with lots of foliage forty dollars one long stemmed arrangement of pale pink and white roses with lots of foliage thirty five dollars one arrangement of freesia it comes in various colors so please mix them up freesia is a favorite 20 dozen clean towels outside of the production office that's it not too much mm -hmm. to ask right Mm -hmm. Mariah Carey likes her room draped in black. 75 degrees, three seat couch, plain colors, no busy patterns. Nope. Three seat couch, huh? She likes three seats. <laughs> uh, 12 one liter bottles of Fiji water, three bottles of Chardonnay, 12 Cokes, 12 Diet Cokes, 12 vanilla protein shakes, six sparkling waters, 12 melon flavored Gatorade, six red wine glasses, six white wine glasses, four Joe Malone vanilla candles, two white, uh, two vases of white roses, fried chicken, warm. <laughs> right. 12, 12 small bottles of water room temperature three whole lemons and honey and sugarless gum okay. and, and by the way folks that fried chicken and watermelon thing don't believe it yeah. again based off the individual <laughs> now Eminem want to know his who's next and by the way, he doesn't want a whole lot. He's actually pretty reasonable. Um, Grace Jones? Yeah, sure. 
Oh. <laughs> okay. She's weird, so yeah. Yeah. Six bottles of Louis Roderer Crystal Champagne, three bottles of French Vintage Red Wine, St. Emilon Medic or Bordeaux, three bottles of French Vintage White Wine, Sancerre Polyphysi, I'm probably mispronouncing those, two dozen Fine Claire or Colchester Oysters on Ice Unopened. Grace does her own shucking. Two sashimi and sushi platters for eight people. Six fresh lemons, one bottle of Tabasco, one fresh fruit platter. Hmm? She's having a party, huh? She is, yeah, because next thing is fruit, fresh fruit platter for eight people. Six bottles of Coca-Cola, 12 bottles of still and sparkling water, 12 bottles of fresh fruit juices, wine glasses, champagne flutes and tumblers, all glass, no plastic, cutlery and a sharp knife, an oyster knife, a makeup mirror, no neon strip lighting, only opaque white bulbs, fresh towels, clothes hangers, clothes rail, three to four bunches of flowers, prefers lilies and orchids, Sofa and armchairs. Hold on, I'm checking comments here. <laughs> uh, uh, football player, he says PETA, I guess in reference to... Mm. Uh, McCartney. McCartney, yeah. Let's see, we got Drake here. He wants Dutch, Dutch Master President cigars and easy wider rolling papers. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And like four, five, six different alcohol. Jack White. I don't even know who that is. Oh, you know what? I'm okay with this. He wants a dozen chicken wings, buffalo teriyaki, surprise us, fresh homemade guacamole, champagne flutes, wine glasses, highball glasses, hummus and pitas, iPod player with sufficient volume control. No fluorescent lighting. Please note, this is a no banana tour. Seriously, what's that mean? No guys in his room? I don't know. It's a, but him? He had a no banana policy. Ah, later he said it's an allergy. Ah, okay. Here's Madonna. Oh, wow. No, I got to read this one. Okay. So... The demands, 200-person entourage, 20 international phone lines. Her backstage room must look exactly like her own home. That means she ships around her furniture. Special flower-scented fabric, actual flowers, personal chef who prepares vegan-only meals, and her own dry cleaning service. Alisa Keys? No. Mm. Jay Z? Mm. Uh, Mary J. Blige? Yeah, I kind of dig her a little okay. bit. I too- probably won't after this. <laughs> you might. It's not too bad. Actually, this is actually pretty reasonable. Two humidifiers, 10 medium sized pre washed bath sized towels, no dairy or pork of any kind, 10. One and a half liter bottles of Fiji water. Absolutely, positively must be Fiji. Six cans of Diet Dr. Pepper. Six cans of Schweppes ginger ale. Two packs of Mentos, cinnamon fresh only. Six cans of Red Bull. Six bottles of Black Cherry Propels and Sports Bottle. Eight sets of silverware. 24 napkins. One tub of clean ice. Not too bad compared to some of the others. Now, what about Lady Gaga? No. Who else we got? Cher. Hold on, I'm looking at her list. This is an old one. That must be from the yeah from the 1999 tour. Um. So let's see here. Now she demanded rooms for her male and female dancers, and one for Dr. Stacy, a massage therapist. She also wanted a wig room. One bottle of fine red wine, no Kendall Jackson. Bottle of fine white wine, no Kendall Jackson. Four Cokes, four Diet Cokes. A coffee table, an end table for the phone. TV with VCR and cable hookup. Make sure we can get the following channels. Turner Classic Movies or AMC. (laughs) 
<laughs> Taylor Swift? No. That's okay. Hers reads like a teenager that wants Starbucks. And candy. And ice cream. Iggy Pop? Oh, uh, um, no. <laughs> he used the word fuckloads in his list, just so you know. Um, Van Halen? No? Sure, yeah. Okay, it's the last one on the list, so we're, we're into the wrap-up after this. So, nuts, pretzels, M&Ms, warning, absolutely no brown ones, one large tube of KY jelly... <laughs> Three packs of Marlboro cigarettes box, herring and sour cream, two gallons of non carbonated bottled spring water, three fifths of Jack Daniels black label bourbon, two fifths Stolinetia vodka, one pint of Southern Comfort, two bottles of Blue Nun white wine. So he's a drunk. All of them? I assume they each get their own little stash there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, that's that list. Oh, by the way, I, uh, Iggy Pop wanted a copy of USA Today that's got a story about morbidly obese people in it. That was a fun little thing to find, I'm sure. Who so, is, mm, do you know, just out of curiosity, F-A-E-G Wint? No. Okay. I, I don't know who that is. Um... I was just checking to see who's still with us, and uh, I noticed that name there. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's a, oh yeah, it's it's really whittled down. That list just put them all to bed, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, we, we 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 put them to sleep. But we're wrapping <laughs> it up now. Next week we've got Matricula, and probably RW Mac. I've got to set that up and arrange that. Um, and we'll be talking about Twitch. We're going to teach you guys how to set up your account and that will start out with like if you're a listener you know how you sign in follow a page etc and then if you're going to run a channel we'll even give you some information on that so that'll be a good time we've got two great people who are just a load of fun joining us matricula being one of them and uh yeah i think that's all i need to say about next week's show right yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, twitching the night away. Yeah, and we got about two minutes here. Let's do a closing toast here. Okay, yeah. Ed, why don't you take it, bud? You did the I, whole I show. I need to be prepared. Well, you, you prepared the whole show. You didn't prepare a toast? Fuck no! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, I started it with here's the learning things you didn't realize you didn't know. Did you learn anything tonight, people? <laughs> and I'm going to go similar with that theme there. Of, uh, but he, here's the learning about another person before you judge them. Once you know them, judge the fuck out of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't have a problem with judging. I just have a problem judging when you don't know somebody. <laughs> Once you're like, nope, they're an asshole. Carry on. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Chuck, yeah. commenting on your list, Paris Hilton should demand some things before her next event, like some talent. <laughs> I don't know if she was on that list. Katy Perry was, though. But yeah, hers read with like different kinds of ice cream and Twizzlers and booze and, I don't know, Snuggie or something. I don't know. It wasn't actually a Snuggie. But... And good night to you, too, Victoria. Always lovely seeing you. Indeed. We're thinking about seeing you. Whichever. Well, yeah, they're set to. Oh, there's no pictures this week. Good night, Ian. Let's see, I think we got all that. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, thanks to all of you for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, for you guys watching After the Fact on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Feel free to join us live on Twitch where you can comment, like you see the stuff scrolling by there. Um, what else do you do? Share it. Share it. Check out the other videos. Yes, please like, share, tell your friends, your family, send us money, uh, whatever. <laughs> what, what, what he said. Um, okay, yeah, I guess we're at a point. Yeah, we can wrap this up. Let's go with the closing, guys. Have a good one. We'll catch you next week, guys.
Good night, everyone. Okay, and we're going to shut down Twitch also, so good night to everybody on Twitch, and thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for the bits, the cheers, and the conversation.